Hello, it is I, B. Dave Walters, your humble dungeon master, and my pronouns are he, him. I'm Johnny Chiodini, my pronouns are they, them. I'm playing Rust on the Harbour, he, him, a tabaxi rogue. Hi, I am Rhiannon Frost, my pronouns are she, they. I'm playing Sentry, she, and she is a guardian paladin. Hi, my name is Gabe Hicks, my pronouns are he, they, and I am playing Solak, the Kalashtar Ranger, whose pronouns are also he, they. Hi, I'm Ellen Rose, my pronouns are she, her, and I am playing Meryl Wen, whose pronouns are she, her, who is a wood elf druid. I like to turn into cats sometimes. Hi everybody, I'm Mark Humes, also known as Sherlock Humes, uh, he, him, she, they, whatever you want, really, I, I do everything, really, myself. Uh, and I'm going to be playing uh, Miria Elithrin, uh, who is she, her, who is a silver nastry elf, kind of a disguised Chadarkai elf, uh, necromancy wizard. Hello and welcome to Idol Champions Presents Fury of the Black Rose. This is episode six, The Falcon's Flight, as I was furiously scrambling to retweet Mark's beautiful photo right before we went up. I'm like, eh, 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 hi, hello, welcome. To the- ah, all right, hello, welcome. Uh, it has been quite a journey uh to get here and we were just having a, a nice little bit of a love in here saying how much fun we've all had and i was like great i want to say all the happy things at the beginning because you may not have happy things to say to me <laughs> by the end mm. so uh also you all look beautiful uh th- this is uh, all fantastic also special shout out to johnny there with uh, the high stealth for rust on the harbor you look like a guy and not a tabaxi that is, that is just like a, like a <laughs> person thank you, self. thank you so much yeah. <laughs> yeah. i sounded like mario then oh. <laughs> there was definitely more mario than i think rust in there yeah, yeah. What else? <laughs> but that's all part of the hiding rust i get it i get it right. that, that, exactly uh, exactly exactly yeah brava uh and yes uh, we are also joined by v here is leanne for Hiya. our grand finale so uh again this is now the sixth week of this i'm still not used to having not having to introduce you uh but let me go ahead and say the things that i am supposed to say as always thank you to the players of idle champions for tuning in and for voting uh we acknowledge that these stakes are high especially here in the finale uh as always there might be a reason why somebody makes a non-optimal choice. They may make a mistake. They may be trying to set up something narratively. They may be doing something that I asked them to do, or it's just emotions are high, and when things are kind of going wild, sometimes you might make a mistake, and that's fine. We just ask that you, of course, respect the players, avoid backseating. I would be remiss if I didn't say once again that every armchair quarterback has a 100% completion rate. So. Just uh, sit back and enjoy the show. Again, the uh, the winners of the votes are public, but I ask uh, if you know the winners of the votes, don't say anything because they're going to come out here organically. You don't have to like spam and chat what the vote is. If you know, that's cool. If you don't know, you know, it's uh, I'll, I'll point them out to you as they happen. Also, I super chug some protein powder and it's like choking. I feel it like right now. I'm going to like start coughing <laughs> uncontrollably. Yeah, yeah. It is, oh, it not is fun. Yeah, because it won't it won't come now. That's now it's weird. Now it's weird. But if I mute out of nowhere and you see violent like that's, that's, that's why that is. <clears throat> Hang on, wait. I have I have I have to try. Hold on. We just see a cloud of dust come out of BD. Right? So it's yeah. like the cinnamon challenge. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Um, dragon breath. That's it's true. Not that's DJ. true. I mean, Lucky I have, powder power. I, have, I have a number of DMs present. You know, shit in a pinch, I'd be robbed from the ability to speak. Uh, today's <laughs> screen code is the Black Rose Fury. The Black Rose Fury, which again is a verbal component, is the Black Rose Fury. That's an easy one. That's an easy one mm-hmm. today. Uh, the rewards are one goal, Russ Chess, one goal, Miria Chess, one goal, Marilyn Chess, one goal, Solok Chess, and one goal, Sentry Chess. So something for everybody. Uh, it expires April 3rd at 9 a.m. Pacific. We have our gargantuan giveaways. We have an icon of the realms, uh, Balagos, the ancient red dragon. Mine's over there, but it's like a, 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 it doesn't do it justice to show. Um, this includes the gargantuan red dragon mini, and it does say mini in quotes because it's like, 
yay big. Like it's a it's a big old chunky baby. I mean, I could grab Tiamat if they want, since the scales since it's a comparable. But it's uh, Tiamat is Tiamat. You know, this is Balagos, <laughs> ancient red dragon. Uh, once again, how about our Beatrice? I have her. <laughs> uh, you know, now you're just showing off. That, that is. He has yeah, all of the things. There was like a this whole thing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Quebec is excluded from the giveaway. Once again, you know why, Quebec. Uh, for the international giveaway, the Idol Champions Ultimate Dragonlance Collection, which this is a big old <laughs> mouthful. We have the High Rollers Dragonlance Skin Bundle, the Oxventure Dragonlance Skin Bundle, the Dragonlance Solok, Miria, and Jahira theme packs, uh, the Green, Red, and White Dragon Elf Familiar packs, the Black Dragon Elf Familiar, the Knights of Tekisa Skins Bundle, the Dragonlance Cridal, Nerys, Bayloth, Imoen, and Viconia Skin and Feed packs, uh, Brunor, Celeste, Nayella, Jarlax, Ashara, Minskin, Boo, Delina, in Machis starter packs in the complete Force Gray pack. That is the international giveaway. Uh, this prize cannot be split up. It is non-transferable. Make sure you check your whispers when the giveaway closes. The winners will be announced at the end of the giveaway. Yeah, and again, it's via Twitch Whisper is how we will contact you if we say at the end that we note uh, that you are a winner. Uh, and last but certainly not least, thank you to Jay and Jordan for moderating, keeping everybody safe, making sure everybody has a chill time. Uh, I know we're all going to get along great, though. Nothing to even worry about. Yeah. Again, super happy fun time. <laughs> and it's, okay. I okay. understand. <laughs> I understand why you might be doing a suspicious, and and that's fine. As we bring ourselves back to a clearing near a ruined tower, where a sixty-foot-long red dragon with a seventy-five-foot wingspan has revealed itself and essentially swore, um, said that you all must swear fealty to Tachesis or be destroyed. Through a burst of mystical power, uh, the likes of which were not clear, Miria, who had been struck dead by Soth's death dragon, has stood up again somehow. And Miria, as you get up, you realize uh, no one seems to have noticed just yet. Although uh, Paladin has restored you with his power, uh, you are still grievously wounded and have used a lot of your own mystical might here. As mm -hmm. Ember is essentially just expanding his wings and roaring in victory. Uh, what would Miria like to do? I think seeing the others down there, Miria is at the top of the tower as well and is a considerable distance, uh, you know, sort of away from everybody and doesn't really have a lot of options for getting out of here. Um, and I assume that the dragon elves all flew away, didn't they? They all sort of flew it, away when... Uh, they're the nearby, but they were sort of kind of pushed to the edges and they're very mm -hmm. much kind of like cowed by Ember, trying not to make eye contact. Yeah. So I think... Um, Miria will use her uh, blessing of Nutari, the blessing of the Raven Queen, sort of uh, mm -hmm. from uh, being Shakai, to teleport as down to the ground if I can. Um, and uh, basically, uh, seeing this immense dragon and and basically head towards Merowyn or Sentry because she knows that those two can heal her if necessary. Um, and a sort of appearing, uh, just say to them. We need to leave now. There's no way we can stand up against this thing. Not after fighting Soth. Come on, let's go, let's go. Uh, Solok. I was uh, just going to sit quietly because I may or may not have already sworn <laughs> myself to, to Kisses, but that's separate. Uh, may or may not. May, 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 may or may not, actually. Uh, in Solok, as again uh due to the non-linear nature of time and the unreliable nature of power we just didn't really say where solok was last week um and so what i'm going to say is solok had simply pulled off from the group to do a little bit of scouting uh and as you are approaching uh, i would say you've probably heard of ember by reputation uh he is probably the largest red dragon on Kryn. Uh, he's gargantuan. Uh, there are swaths of undead 
out through the forest whose lines are broken and scattering now that Soth has been killed. And you can tell by the corpse of the death dragon on the ground uh, in front of them that a calamitous battle has taken place. You see your friends alternatively injured uh, to different degrees. Miria by a wide margin looking the worst. But standing in the midst of them, you see a figure that you hadn't recognized or hadn't seen before, Solok. Uh, It looks like a young elf, elven man in monastic robes uh, with seven golden birds flitting around him. And he looks up at you, Solok, and he kind of like looks you up and down and sees the iconography of the Dragon Queen on you. And his eyes sort of narrow for a second. And then all six of you can see this young man. And he looks up at Ember and he says, Hmm. Now that is a fearsome beast. Unfortunately, heroes, I cannot intervene personally because if I intervene personally, my sister will intervene personally and things will quickly become calamitous. I can assist you somewhat though. I can give you a bit of a head start. I can give you a bit of a rest. I sense that you're near your journey's end. The bonds of dedication and friendship that you forge are a silver light in my senses even at a great distance. Though the connections that touch my mind to other worlds and all worlds, I sense others with that same dedication. Maybe they would aid you if they could, and it is in my power to make it so. I can send friends if you would like that. And all of you see this man. Uh Uh-huh. What kind of friends? I mean, friends would be useful right now. There's a huge dragon. And uh, they look kind of angry. Has time stopped? Be Dave, like, this is like he's speaking to us, but like Ember is frozen. Time hasn't. Ember is literally just like. <laughs> okay, kind he's, of, he's kind of ignoring you. Yes, mm-hmm. exa- yes. Like, uh, you see, he's breathing his fire on the undead as they're just scattering. I mean, as far as Ember's concerned, like. He, he's won. You're beaten. Either you're going to join or he's going to kill you and it's going to be fine. Ember is just celebrating the defeat of Lord Soth. Mm-hmm. Although there's no indication that Ember has noticed this man is here. I have no one to call, no allies, but rest. Uh, I, I, fighting Soth has taken everything so far. Uh, rest. Um, and also... The captain, they're supposed to be bringing the ship as, as it's supposed to be ready to fly. If we can get aboard that, we may be able to escape, but mm. I do not have the strength to fight this dragon. I tell you that now. You see Paladin turns and he looks at Merylwyn and he looks at Sentry and he says, Healing magic has been gone from Kryn for some time. By what power are you working these miracles? What god do you serve? The power is not from Kryn, it's from Arois. From the Guardians. And mine is from Geth, and from nature itself. Mmm. Interlopers. Good. I think your light will give more hope to these people than you might have expected. And you see as he's standing there, Ember does stop and it's like... I sense the stink of Paladin. And does turn his head towards you all. And Paladin just says, Good luck, heroes. The fate of all Kren may rest with you and he holds up his hands and you all feel a soothing breeze blow up just like a gentle white mist like you're in the clouds and it dissipates 
and you find yourself standing in front of the ruins of a blue barn, uh, like Co Captain Carstairs told you to look for. Uh, you see the crew is working frantically uh, to do something that you can't quite make out. And as you appear here, you have gained the benefits of a long rest. Good, thank you. <laughs> okay. Yes, but Solok, theoretically, you don't know what happened. What happened to all of you? Who was that? What happened to you? Where were you? There were a lot more problems in the distance that I thought were... I simply went to scout. I didn't expect you would all be in such great peril. Soth found us. One of the auto gnomes, was it, Merylwyn? Um Hmm. Kerplunk yes, or yes. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. The the noisy one. The <sighs> the bitter one, to be fair. <sighs> uh question for you all here. Uh, at some point, I don't believe we clarified this, but at some point during the conflict, um, that autonome was trying to get away. Um, Krokesh was trying to escape. Um, would you all have let Krokesh go or would one of you have tried to do something, uh, as he was trying to pedal away on his little, uh, flying scooter? <laughs> um, <laughs> Miria, I, th here's the thing. Miria would absolutely have wanted to do something about him. But I think that if that was, you know, if, if it depends on when she would have had time to do it. Because as soon as Soth would have made his presence clear, she would have forgotten all about the gnome. She wouldn't have cared about the gnome. But if mm. there was moment like, there, there's no way Miria would have let that him get away for what he did. Uh, she, you know, she, she delib he deliberately put them in danger. She wouldn't. She wouldn't uh, be very pleased about that. But I also would have imagined that Mira would have shown some restraint if any of the rest of the team would have been like, "No, nope, leave him. Let him go." She would have been like, oh, "Fine." <laughs> mm -mm. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> good. 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 <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, if if it was available, like Mira probably could have like you know cast a spell to knock him out of the sky or something like that. So. Wait, what was that? Rest? Did Rest say Rest would have done something? Yeah, it was something flying. Rust is like. <laughs> right? Russ just kind of stood there and he's like get, 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 doing the weird chattering <laughs> cats do when it's out of like <laughs> you, yeah. nine lives your coin is like ah they, we of course we would have like knocked them out of the sky and then of course we we it's not just about revenge so much we don't have to get even because you can never really get even they say when you try oh, to yeah. like you should like if you try to take one grave you should take two you know that, that type thing but I mean it was in fine. case you accidentally <laughs> kill two people I know in case you accidentally <laughs> kill two people you understand me so clearly rust oh. this is like beautiful <laughs> um uh you all see i guess this is the first time you would have noticed that rust has a coin again about the size of the palm of his hand uh with if solok sees it a very old inscription of knights of solomnia uh but it talks at length um, <laughs> we all hear it talk it's not just rust yeah you all hear yeah you all hear it talk yeah we're functionally married. Yes, yes, yeah, I finally found the oh. one um, in, in the palms of a tabaxi. Oh, oh, that's lovely. That's yeah, wonderful. Um, I don't think I should go scouting anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't recommend it. Uh, and and Solok also, um, Solok leans in, there's a little bit of like dismay or like, not shame, but concern. Uh, the massive dragon, a figure who seems to be close to Dekesis, attacked you all? Didn't attack, uh, sort of appeared and made threats, join Dekesis' army or die, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. They were the one that slew Slo uh, Soth's death dragon, but... It's gone. Yeah. So soft. Mm -hmm. Well, and not entirely. Soth will return, unfortunately. There is 
and there are very, there is almost no force here on Kreen that can permanently destroy Soth. But and Miria will look directly at you, Solak, and lift up her soul cage. But he is caged for now. In Draconic, not necessarily quietly, but softly, Solak distinctly says. If you have shown them lenience, then you have indeed earned some of my favor. Uh, distinctly, like kind of speaking aloud to Dekesis, since when he left, the dragon might have threatened his companions, but didn't slay them. Yeah, Ember, I don't, Ember I, I, heard them. I think this is the first time uh, you've all probably seen up close that... Solak does have like a banner of Takesis, probably like not so much drawn, but like almost like burned into the pauldron sides of his armor. Mm -hmm. That was not there when you first met him. And Miria would understand the significance of going from the Knights of uh, Solomnia to this now new Ugh. Code of Why Honor. Mm. Uh, I mean, yeah, maybe. The Salam Salamnic Knights of Takesis. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a work in progress. That's, that's, yeah. a, that's a that's a thing. It's not not a thing. They wrote a lot of books. We can make it work. This does Man. bring up an interesting question. What do we do now? Thanks to the graces of one of our, I suppose, gods, if you wish to call them that, Paladine, we have been saved for now. But Ember is still out there, and I imagine that their threats still remain. It seems that your crew of your ship is working on this astral vessel. What now? What all of you? And she will look at Rust, Merowyn, and Sentry specifically. Well, what do you need from us? Me? Nothing? Yeah. Nothing? I would what like to accompany you. Need? Miria will gesture to Solak on to Rust, as in, I think he is in a better position to answer that question. I think we need to give you enough time to get home at this point. You what have about... done so much. But the job's not finished. We, I know we didn't mean to start all of this, but I would like to at least help bring it to an end so we know that you're all safe. There's one thing that I would disagree on. This was not a job that you were pulled into. You volunteered your lives for us. And I would you say, don't know Sentry. Anything. I would say, Sentry, as well. Defeating Soth was one thing. Ember is a champion of Tekesis. Tekesis is a goddess, and she has longed for Kryn for a very, very long time, long before Soth. I do not think that as powerful as you and Merowyn and Rust are, I don't think you can save Kryn from Tekesis. I don't think there is anyone that may be able to. It may be that she is destined to take this world. I can't say, but I'm not sure what, what you could do. I'm not sure what any of us could do. I think that perhaps now the only thing I would at least hope for is that there may be a chance we could bargain with the Queen of Dragons for you and Merowyn and Rust and I to leave this place. And so like if he wishes, but I imagine that you're, you would wish to remain. But uh, that is an assumption of, on my part. I do love a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> but I think she can be bargained with. What do we do? Merylwyn, <clears throat> mm -hmm. as they're all talking, you see a golden bird, similar to those golden birds that uh, was flitting around that young man who apparently was a god of some sort. And it's sitting on a branch and it looks right at you and it looks down towards the base of the tree and it looks at you again. And it flits down to a rock near the base of the tree and looks right at you and looks down at the ground and then hops behind the rock where you can't see. I I mean, I'm gonna 
shiny thing. I'm gonna go look at the shiny thing. <laughs> the shiny um, so yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm like, okay, I think this bird wants me to look at this rock, so I'm gonna go have a look. Uh, Marilyn, is you get closer and you look on the other side of it, you see the bird is sort of sitting on the ground near the base of the tree and it looks at you and it looks kind of towards a hole in the tree and it looks at you again and it just sort of like dissipates like fades away and you hear something scratching around inside the tree okay i'm gonna go i can have a little peek just use my good elvish eyes to <laughs> what do your in the dark. Eyes see? yeah Yes. <laughs> uh, is you look in the hole, it takes your eyes a second to adjust. It's, it just sort of looks like um, a mass of sort of brown fur at first until you distinctly make out a snakeskin collar. And a familiar face looks back at you as Simon comes crawling out from the tree and just sort of stretches a little bit and gives you a headbutt <laughs> and rubs up against you. Marwen bursts into tears and hugs the cat. <laughs> <laughs> you pick him up and he squirms slightly as cats are wont to do, but he doesn't fight too terribly hard to get away from him. And as you hold him against you and you feel his fur on your face in his scent, it's him, it's Simon. Restored to life by the power of Paladin. Do we do we hear Merylwyn? Like, do we hear like the the cry? Okay, Mer yes, Mer Mer would immediately, me. yeah, like Merylwyn, like thinking that something's wrong, like immediately, like green energy crackling, like Merylwyn, what's wrong? <laughs> like Merylwyn's trying to talk but can't get like That's actual sobbing. words out. Yep. <laughs> Girl in the bathroom. Yeah. It's, it's, it's my cat. It's just trying to... <laughs> don't I don't know that language. <laughs> I I do so like she's very. Oh, honey, that, that, yeah. Rust, Rust, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think she means a different cat, not Rust, our, our cat man. But no, yes, of, co of course. No, I wasn't going to hit him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 take, I take Simon, but I'm still like, <laughs> and I take Simon up to Rust, and I'm like, Simon, this is Rust. Rust, this is hmm? he, Rust. <laughs> this is my friend. We go way back. Um, yeah, I can tell. You never cried to say hello to me. I can summon <laughs> water to spray Rust if we need to. I can summon some water if he needs a little spritz. <laughs> It's it, Meryl, when Simon was your friend, I mean, when confronted with this full size cat man, how do you feel? How do you feel? Simon responds, It's him, so y you tell me. Yeah, Simon's a bit like, <laughs> it lo looks a little bit like, Have you replaced me? <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> and I'm like, No, 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 this is different, different, like, no, don't go to repeat you. Um, <laughs> If we, this is my pal. We should be buddies. Don't worry. I you don't hear, replace friends. I make them. You hear nine lives. It's like, well, this is awkward. It's like you have met me. You're starting to move on, and now she's got her ex here. And like, oh, <laughs> so it's just, hopefully, you can still like work effectively. You know, it's a um... <laughs> rust. Do you ever get head scratches? Is that a thing that you crave? I don't. Yeah. I don't know how this works. Yeah, Jace. Oh. Of course. He did enjoy my massage. We had the skeletons <laughs> give him a massage and he did enjoy it. Yeah. Mm. I mean, who does not like head scratches? If you have a head, I recommend all of you try what? the head scratches. It's a... does, does the coin have a head? I mean, I have heads and tails. You know, exactly. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, like, leaf person, you know? But the, it, it's always like uh, the, this, like, um, flying dragon man does, does not know how coins work. It's like, okay, I don't know where he's from. Like, perhaps they do not have currency in the land that he hails from. That is true. Maybe he just needs to see a flip. The, it, I have not oh, done yeah, dry flip in some time. That's true. Yeah, they would, I mean, would you assist me, mon frere? Or I mean, could you just uh, give me, like, a little like, boop, you know? Of course. Ping. Give me a sleight of hand roll. Uh, okay. uh -oh. I'm going to hit it out of the air. That thing is cursed. 
I'm um, holding I rolled Simon a one. in place. Oh, <laughs> oh no! A one on your sleight of hand. It, you know what, Rust? You tell me what goes terribly wrong with the, with this coin toss. Of course, I just. <laughs> it was not ready for this stage of our relationship. My life? My life? Perhaps someone could hit him on the back, please. <laughs> this, I feel like that's coming out my mouth. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. So, Locke, were you really trying? <laughs> 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 yeah. Essentially, like, have our hands like ready to catch it, like, standing yeah. in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> Blah. Uh, is all of this is happening. A, a, a moment later, you see Captain Carstairs pokes her eyes out of the barn and she is covered in like dirt and oil and clearly has been working and her eyes look at you and then like look past you at the resurrected crew of the of the light fantastic and just comes running out it's like uh what um are they zombies because the last time i saw them they were zombies it's like oh no we are still alive and i'm never been oh so happy to be this old did you say put me to work let me do something i mean they're out here and he's swallowing talking coins and she's crying over cats and i i don't even know where we are could we just get back inside and you see the captain just sort of looks at you and she's like you know you think i'd be used to traveling with like unusual people and things happening, but uh, we've been here like two days and this place is kind of nightmarish. So I think I'd like to go if it's... Me, can we, I'd like it if. Mm -hmm. This might yeah. be about time. D well, okay. Um, good news, bad news. Um, Bad news first. Well, the bad news won't make any sense without the context of the good news. Good news, ship exists, was real. That's cool. Um, yes. Met some some very nice auto gnomes uh, that have been helping us try and get it flight worthy. Uh, this, uh, these are all the positives. Um, there are a number of negatives. Uh, several holes in the hull. Most of them patched probably is going to maintain the atmosphere. Won't really know until we get into the vacuum of space, but I mean, gosh, who needs to breathe except, you know, most biological things. It, it, uh, d d uh, robot woman, um, do you need to breathe? Uh, I don't... I, physiologically, I don't think I function the same way as humanoids do, so probably not. Water doesn't affect me. And sentry. My dear, Sentry, this one is called. So, but you know, I didn't mean to be rude, but here's the thing. There was a completely different construct in the hull of my ship, and then its face changed and its eyes opened, and it was her, and then immediately after that, we sort of got into an accident, and then there was a crash, and we were sort of like trapped on a calamitous hell. Your excuses here. are delightful, my dear, but from now on, Sentry. And what is your name, terrifying bone arm woman? Miria. <laughs> Miria. Got it. Maria Sentry. Great. I'm glad that's the most important thing that we have to discuss right now. Fantastic. It's important to have manners. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so uh, more, uh, more good news. And you see she sort of leads you all towards the barn. And you can see what is clearly a very old um, ship that is, that is sitting there. And you can kind of... Um, make out uh on the side of it the word falcon painted in very old faded common uh it basically looks like a cannon with just enough ship built around it um for yes. rust and Marilyn who have been in space i would say you all have seen a uh, a, a gif bombard uh before uh, which is basically that. It's it's like a, a proto Death Star. It is just a gun with enough ship to move the gun, um, and and you see the uh, the GIF member of the crew is sort of patting it lovingly, and he goes, Bleh, "We'll get this old girl working soon." Don't want to bring a gun to a knife fight. Don't want to get it scratched. <laughs> and just goes back, just sort of tinkering away with it, in. The captain looks and she goes, 
I, I, I don't I don't know what that means. Um, but he assures us the gun will be shootable, but the gun isn't shootable. What is missing? What would make this this ship work? Or this gun function? Well, I mean, and you do see the crew is all over it, hard at work, uh, sawing and patching and, and, and working away at this thing. And there are auto gnomes working on it also. She's just like, ah, it's like 600 years old. And they built this lovely barn over it to keep it safe. But as you see, uh, it's kind of rocked to the side now. And you can see the barn is like listing and dilapidated. And she says, I mean... We kind of got, we got to get the ship flying, which we're close, close, close. I mean, I sent the sending being like, you guys should head this way. Cause I thought you were going to be here in like hours, not like seconds. I don't really know how you did that, but that's like, again, it's like a magic thing, whatever. I mean, I can do magic too. Okay. I mean, most of the magic I do is in surviving crashes, but I mean, it's still, it's a, still a valid form of sorcery. Okay, that's the first thing. Uh, second of all, though, even when we get the ship ready, we kind of got this old building that is kind of pinning it in place because it was meant to protect it, and then now it's kind of the ship's tomb. And also, there's probably, like, hordes of undead and dragons and things that are coming here to eat us and do something terrible. But, I mean, I'm slightly less afraid now because apparently being dead and a zombie and back to life is like a revolving door. So, I mean, maybe that this whole time the mortal existential dread of death was just misplaced, really, when it just can come back again. No. Yes. <laughs> Also, so, um, what do what, you just, need? What, 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 one, one last question. Rust, mm. Rust, Rust. Wait, what? First of all, <clears throat> Rust, you okay? You look, you look a little like shocked, like you just like swallowed something weird or something. You, like you good? I did. <laughs> I'm not here to, to to judge your life choices. Uh, second thing, okay. second thing, just real quick, real quick, real quick. Is that mm -hmm. woman like made out of leaves? Like there wasn't a leaf woman. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, I know. L listen, I've been through this myself. You're going to want to climb up onto her head. Don't. It is... I mean, who wouldn't want to climb up on that head? I mean, am I right? <laughs> no, no, I can right. hear no, y'all, right? That is not helping. Uh, yes, um, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, um, hello. Um, and you see Captain Carstairs. Uh, she is middle-aged and disheveled currently but i mean she does have very kind eyes and she's like captain of the falco falco the, the, the light fantastic too yes hi hello nice to meet you literally nice to, nice to meet you too i'm i'm leanne it's the, it I prefer what? to be called a dryad. Leaf lady kind of gets to be a misnomer because not all of us have leaves, you know? Dryad. Dryad. Okay, now wait a second. Sentry just said she's not affected by water. Are you affected by dryads? <laughs> well, mm -hmm. Oh, come on. That one was good. You know, just because we've been running, running for our beer because that was a reach. Just, I, okay, listen. If you want if, to believe it was funny, you can. I want to Marilyn like all proud of herself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, she, she, she goes, oh, I almost forgot. Uh, speaking of, of colorful uh, visitors here, um, someone else showed up while you all were gone, um, said to let her know when you arrived. Um, just like um mm. she's a little weird looking though so everybody be cool okay uh, who who exactly would this be do you know um, and from deep inside uh like the hull of the ship because the gift bombard uh hold on the gift bombard is like 155 feet long which is What's that? Hang on, I'm mathing. What's that like? Fifty meters? See, I'm I'm, I'm trying to be uh, I'm, I'm trying to try, <laughs> trying to be it's cognizant. Forty-seven. Ah, there you go. 
47 is about 50. Thank you very much. I mean, that's, like, that's I, yeah, I, that's I need, I'm from Arkansas. I'm not even supposed to know how to do metric conversions, okay? <laughs> um, but it's, uh, the, the, the ship is about 155 feet long. So, so it, it, you know, it's not, it's not small. Um, and from deep inside the hull, uh, you all hear, hang on a second, I'm going to send you all a picture vicariously because Discord is not cooperating with me here. Um, if uh, if our production overlords would send that over it. to you guys, I'd appreciate it um, because uh, there's limits to my ability to multitask. From deep inside the hull, you all hear a little voice say, well, I'm not weird looking, darling. All of you are weird looking with your arms and legs and just your two eyes. And out of the window, you all see, for those of you that have seen a beholder before, a very small beholder. Uh, she's about the size of a beach ball. Uh, she's pink uh, and she has little pairs of glasses on each eye. Each eye just kind of has one thick glass. And she just says, hello, darlings. My name is Iris. Nice to make all of your acquaintances. <laughs> Iris. It's, it's, it is, it is very on the nose, such as it is for someone who doesn't have one. Yes. So, um, now listen, I was on board the Xanathar's vessel when you had your unfortunate collision. And I told them, I was like, Xanathar, what are you doing? You can't just go out here running people off the road. And he said something like, oh, they are going to pay for having scratched the Xanathar's new magnificent vessel. And you should go and destroy them. Blah, 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 blah. I sort of tuned out at that point. So, um. I promised him, yes, I would come down here and I would destroy all enemies of the Xanathar. But the truth is, I just wanted to come down and I would say lend a hand, but that's not really a thing I do. So we'll say I came to keep an eye on things. Yeah. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I think I just watched so like have a mild panic attack. He doesn't know what it, he doesn't know what this is. It has yeah. no ears. It got a mouth and eyes. It has no nose. Can it smell him? Can it hear us speaking? <laughs> you uh, is uh, oh, so actually so luck. Are you thinking that, or do you say it out loud? Yes. Um, <laughs> Because when, when when you even start thinking it, she turns and looks right at you and she's like, yes, I can hear and smell you. And also I know what you're thinking, at least on occasion, yes. Even Miria probably looks a little bewildered and sort of amazed at this creature because this is not a, a, a thing that she has ever encountered before. And is is almost, uh, the thoughts would be more... Uh, less kind of um, rudimentary and sort of more like, oh, I wonder if I dissect it. How? Wh what bones does it have? Does it have bones? Does this <laughs> thing have blood? Hmm. Could I raise it as a as a you know as a creature? Those kind uh, of thoughts. G give me an Arcana check, um, sure. Miria. Uh, with contacts in, I have to pick up my dice to see them. Uh, mm -hmm. That is oh wow, that's sixteen plus seventeen. That's thirty three. <laughs> Uh, you realize a couple of things. I mean, this creature is biological, and if it lives, it can be raised be and unlived. undead. It can mm -hmm. be unlived, yes. Uh, it, no, it doesn't seem like uh, it has bones. Uh, you didn't hear the, the Xanathar ranting extensively about the beauty of his mucus sex, um, but this is a, a completely different um, sort of being. Also, with a roll that high, you realize it is not native um mm. this plane of existence it's from somewhere far away like this this thing is weird um, absolutely fascinating oh you're just saying that because it's true darling yes, yes. But, very yeah, but, true darling very but, true well but you have to also i really like this aesthetic here i like this what you're doing thank with you, all of this you. it's a, if you're going to have arms why well, cover it in all that useless skin and muscle is what i say <laughs> if you've got bones flaunt them i mean i find everybody so wants to show their teeth bones but i'm like what about the rest of them i mean why are you covering up and being like so decoy and demure with all of it. You should just let your bones show, I think. I like this one very much. 
much. Uh, you said your name was Iris, darling. Yes, Iris. And unfortunately, you know, the Xanathar is my cousin, such as it is. Beholders don't really have family, but we might as well. But he and I, I like to tell people that we don't see eye to 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 eye on a lot of things. So I figured if I come here, I make sure you all are all right, you know, help you get your vessel back into space, then everything's gonna be fine and the wash, I think, huh? <laughs> what, what was that so long? Sorry. Are you going back into space with the ship? I mean, Why do you want her to stay? As I said, depends on who's asking. Are you offering to show me around this lovely war torn apocalypse? There's no thoughts in his head right now. <laughs> Everything has cleared. <laughs> Just vibes. Because Just vibes. He's, he's like, I don't want to say yes, because yeah. then if they're going on the ship, then I'm afraid to. If they say they're not going on the ship, maybe I will take a vacation from Kryn. Hey, it's lovely anywhere else than here right now. Uh, I'm certain that I'll find my way. That's fine. I, I mean, I, I'm always due for another vacation somewhere. You know, it's fine. I'm just, first of all, I just want to make sure that you all have what you need, and then it's going to be all right. And I know what you're thinking. You are like, yes, she's small. Um, Yes, she seems like she's not as young as she once was. Yes, she is astonishingly gorgeous to behold. I know. But I'm also useful and you see as she turns her eye her central eye starts to glow and you see like boxes start floating into the air and loading themselves onto the ship and uh you see she looks at something else and like her wrench is like rotating fixing something there and she goes ah, yeah see obviously you know we beholders are not just pretty faces we have a lot of power that we're capable of wielding Wonderful, marvelous. I think that there's certainly a use, and uh, I don't know much about these these ships, but the captain seems to know it, and and I uh, think that they can likely direct you in the best way. Uh, speaking of captain, uh, captain, you mentioned that this the barn is sort of keeping the ship enclosed. Is that something we can assist with? Is that something where we can help free it? Perhaps is are there tasks that need doing? You see, Captain Carstairs is looking at Iris, and she's like. I want to maintain eye contact, but I mean, am I supposed to look at the middle eye or one of the other eyes? Because one of the other eyes is always looking at me. Do I look at the eye that's looking at me or do I look at... I don't... Oh, yes. Um, yes, if you could do something about the barn, that would be great. Because um, we're, we're almost ready to lift off. So I think right. probably... Um, and we're almost certainly going to live um, when the ship takes off. I mean, all we got to do is get through the clouds of dragons in the sky overhead and then make it out into the atmosphere and then actually live. And then when we enter wild space, hopefully the whole ship doesn't come apart. But realistically, if the ship comes apart, death would be so sudden we wouldn't even know. And isn't instant death basically the same thing as life? No. You have no. no. Miria died. Ask no, Miria. Well, we didn't quite die, darling. No, no. Uh. It was sort of a uh, unconscious, uh, briefly unconscious, and uh, not a living. Hiatus. It was a hiatus. Yeah, thank you so much. Yes, a hiatus, a life hiatus. Oh, it was, uh, oh like a brain died. vacation. Yeah, uh, oh, yes, like a life nice. vacation. Uh, mm. Almost yeah. six hours. Okay. Oh, it was like this. Hold on a second. Uh, Rust, give me a wisdom save, if you would. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh, kill me. 16! <laughs> you see one of Iris's eyes looks at Rust and glows, and Rust just falls asleep. Rust? Um. Yeah, like that. It's a um, brain vacation. Uh, uh, Did somebody say... Rat. What? Is he dead or is he just brain vacation? Oh no, he's <laughs> sleeping. Probably a happy dream. I, I mean, he's cuddling that coin very hard there. I don't know what that's about, but uh, yeah, no, no, he's just sleeping. I didn't hurt him. I'm, I'm not. Uh, yeah. 
I'm not a monster. Well, I mean, I am literally a monster. But besides that, I do not behave as a monster. Mm. Mm. Can Sentry, yeah. like, just poke him? Just make sure that... <laughs> He's just sleeping. What? Okay. Um, <laughs> he looks very peaceful, <laughs> at least. Back with the sterling. Nope, nope, back to sleep. Um, <laughs> the floor. It's his new name. <laughs> I get it. That was Tabaxi name humor. <laughs> what, also, well, what is your name, Brave Knight? I mean, you skipped immediately to asking me to abscond that I have your name, but you don't have mine. Wait, it's... reverse that. You have my name. I don't have yours. I'm getting tongue tied. I'm all for Klimt over here. You have just the one tongue, right? I mean, how bad do you want to know, darling? <laughs> Um, can I think about that response, too? Oh, I think you're going to be thinking about that response extensively, honestly, yeah. Unfortunately, yes, you're right. <laughs> hmm. So, but, you know, actually, what are all your names? Let's just make it less awkward. You can just all tell me I know that's Miria, that's Sentry. I overheard that. The rest of you. Uh, I'm, I'm Meryl Wen, and this, this little bundle of joy is Simon. Hello, Simon. Yes. Is there a, like, brown? I mean, yeah, she's also floating. It? And as, as Rust has explained how cats feel about floating things, she's like... <laughs> That's a big ball <laughs> that's in the air. <laughs> it is a big ball with other balls on stalks oh, that like... are moving. You know what I mean? God, it's a cat toy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, the if that's cat, cat toy, toy, why cat toy shaped? Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Meryl Wynn Simon. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, and the rest of you here, Leaf Lady, like Nightman, what are your names? I'm Leanne. And I'm not no. a Leaf Lady. It's, oh, yes, we, we, uh, you, you are a dryad. Yes, yes. Thank you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you, good sir. Solak thinks I'm not a good sir. I'm a bad sir. And then he's like, "Wait, that sounds weird. Wait, oh, I hate this." I'm Solak. I'm Solak. Hmm, Solak. Very nice to meet you. Very nice to meet all of you. Really. Um. Yeah. So don't mind me. I realize it's hard to take your eye off me. I have the advantage that I can have an eye on all of you. So, you know, I just say I'm just here to help and assist however I can. Um, and yeah, Mary, I heard you mentioning about the bond. I've been told, yeah, they say it needs to come down. I mean, I myself can help a little. And you see another one of her eyes lights up and a beam shoots out, which, Miria, you instantly recognize as disintegration. Mm -hmm. uh, to the rest of you, it's just a beam of light that bores like a perfect hole in the wall where she shoots it. It's like, it's like oh. yeah, but we'd be here some time if I had yeah. to just bring it down that way. Mm -hmm. And also, like, the roof might collapse on everyone and it might harm the vessel or break some of those delightful bones you all seem to have. Oh. Also, Sentry, follow-up question. Do you oh. have bones? Uh, I'm connected by a series of vines and and wooden, uh, like, branches. Relatable. So you're also a leaf person. Look, you don't have bones. I don't have bones. That's a connection. You're a creature of nature. That's a creature of nature. Also, Meryl Wynn also has a druid aesthetic. Look at that, a connection there. Right? So it's like we're all, we're building links here. That's, this is, this is the formation of meaningful relationships. We normally beholders don't have meaningful relationships. We're born from the dreams of other beholders, honestly. I don't know. We don't usually wow. share that with that. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, whoever dreamt me up was very fortunate. But normally, we don't get along with each other because we don't really get along with anybody, right? But I mean, I just try to be different. I say live and let live. I'm literally a dream come true. So if I can't be nice, who can? Exactly. I, li I like this. I, li I, like, I like the way you think. 
I like the way you don't have bones. <gasps> Thank you! <laughs> yeah. I would give you a high five, except, you know, I got a black eye once experimenting with that, and you look okay. very fearsome, but I mean... Oh, hold on. Hold your hand up. Hold your hand <gasps> up. Okay. You feel up. like a bit of telekinetic force, sort of like... <laughs> <gasps> oh! Ah! <laughs> just gonna sit here and float and try not to be too distracting. Um, how I'll tall... Just, for the on. record, sorry, for the record, the good people of Idol Champions voted uh -huh. <laughs> that Iris was gonna show up and help. Amazing. So, Amazing. Yeah, Amazing. So, so, so there you go. I, Iris cool is thing. here and she's gonna help in the best way that she can. Yeah. And also it was voted that uh, when you found the ship that the main cannon was still going to need fixing. That's why the gun okay. doesn't work yet. So there you go, there you go. Nice. Sorry, Marilyn, you were asking something. That's right, um, how tall is the barn? That is an excellent question and it has an <laughs> excellent answer. Um, and here it comes uh, right now. That's right now. <laughs> Uh, I can't find it, so I'm gonna say 50 feet. But it's uh, I'm gonna say it's 50 feet on one side and 30 on the other because the roof is collapsing. I mean, again, this this building is centuries old. Um, no pun intended there. Did you have uh, something in mind, Marilyn? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was gonna show off the beholder, the bones of the earth, but the pillars only go up 30 feet. I was gonna try and like raise the roof a little bit, literally, but it's not quite <laughs> high enough. Yeah, I can't help you with that nope. one, unfortunately. Uh, there is a few things that, that you can do, because the objective here is to try and uh, bring this thing down in such a way that it is kind of going to be a little bit of a controlled collapse uh, or controlled fall where it doesn't hurt the ship or any of you. So you can, um, you can attach ropes to the beams. Um, you can try and literally roll the roof back. You can kind of knock down some of the lower walls. Uh, again, you all, uh, there, there's a few ways we, there's skill checks we can make. Again, you guys have access to a lot of magic. So, uh, I'm, I'm open to suggestions. I mean, I could zap it a little bit and kind of make things dance away a little, little mm -hmm. lightning but oh, that must be a little mm -hmm. dangerous i could send a I gust mean, of I... wind upwards so that any debris that would fall down is at least dispersed oh it's like wind and lightning it's like you all can make I... a little storm that's that's i like that that's so interesting Oh, uh, again, I should mention, and I believe I mentioned it, that it's, it is bright blue. But as you've gotten closer to the barn now that you're looking, especially on the inside, isn't blue at all. Actually, the inside is blue as well, because you're starting to realize it is not that it has been painted. It's something is growing on the wood that is making it blue. Can I try and identify what that thing might be? Uh, you could give me nature... Can I do the same? I'm, like, Marilyn's yes. very intrigued by this. Any of you stuff. can. Yep. I'm staying clear of that stuff. I'm, I'm really <laughs> cleaning myself just looking at it. Like It's uh, been many centuries since uh, Miria did any nature foresty things, and it's only a 14. Yeah, I also got a 14. So what's with your, your excuse, with your, with your, when? Exactly, with your, well, she's I'm playing with I'm not from Simon. here. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> there you go. Double excuses. Double excuses. Uh, Leanne, would you like to try? Because uh, theoretically. I got 27. <laughs> makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. The, the, the two of you are looking and you're like, mm, yes, mold. Very moldy. Very moldy mold. Yes. Um. <laughs> Leanne, you don't know exactly what kind it is, but you do know that it is magical, and it is probably growing because of the latent magic from the ship. Because the ship is a, is a magical vessel that's just been chilling here for centuries, uh, and it is almost just like the conditions were right for this magical mold. So it's an adaptive uh, mold. With a 27, I'm going to also give you that it is poisonous. Uh, adaptive mold, no touchy-touchy, get sicky-sicky. 
Oh, I can summon a I can summon an undead creature to go and sort of remove it. They'll they won't be affected by the poison. That works. It's well, I mean, you could just do that. You could just raise the dead because I thought all the dead in these pods had kind of already been recycled and like conscripted oh. into use. Really, that's raising the dead is is a sort of different term. Sort of conjuring, animating their bones, conjuring um, necrotic spirits, that sort of thing. Not actually bringing the dead back to life. Uh, I mean, I've conjured my fair share of necrotic spirits, usually after eating a little too much spicy food in the trade district. If they ever bring you some of that, like, chult baba ganoush, boy. <laughs> it's a pass. It is a pass. And my mucus sacs were inflamed for a week. I have to take your word for it, darling. Uh, uh, <laughs> Myriad does not know how to deal with Iris. Myriad is just sort of like, this is fascinating and I adore it, but also I don't know how to deal with you. <laughs> I would be remiss, I would be remiss, dear friends, if, if I didn't say this. When we did the very first Idol Champions and Iris showed up for the very first time, Iris is the mascot of CNE Games. That little logo in the Idol Champions, that that's that's <laughs> Iris. And the first time I had to do her voice, I was like well, I need her to, I mean, beholders are monsters. Everybody knows this. So I need her to come across in such a way that she, you know, she's not here to hurt you. And I was like, eh, she's an old grandma from New York. Great. And I was like, I hope I'm not ruining everything. Turns out they didn't mind, darling. How could they? Iris was delightful. But of all the voices I've done, Iris was the one I was the most like, I hope this is okay. But here we go. Yeah. So... That's why Iris talks like that. Anyway, Amazing. how would you all like to proceed? Backwards. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Perfect. See, I like the way you think, my friend, that you have to look at things like non-linearly. Yes, I mean, I was looking at things non-linearly also from the inside of your throat. It was a bit more than I needed to see, but that's okay. I would not have yes, allowed you to choke to death, probably. Okay, that's reassuring. Okay. Uh, I've okay. Oh. So, most important thing is you don't want to actually physically be touching this mold on the walls mm -hmm. because that's probably going to lead to some issues. I don't want to find out, quite frankly. Um, I, I can say I can think I can send something up to deal with it. Um, okay. So perhaps if I, I can remove the mold, then perhaps our stronger uh, companions can perhaps go up there and start dismantling it. Perhaps. Um, they can, I mean, so like you have Tempest, right? You could fly up there and sort of begin tearing apart and removing parts of the roof and things like that. Um, Easily. Rust and I mean, Mirror. can set some of them on fire. That's right, you have Arden as well. Um, but as for the rest, I'm, uh, I mean, Rust and Mirror, when you perhaps have more experience with these ships than any of us, but I, I don't know. Uh, please uh, tell me what, you, what you, you think you would like to do. Yeah, I can uh, help burn away some of the mold. I do produce flame. <laughs> like, that could be a little bit helpful with that. Mm, um, when... I'm pretty used to uh, black powder weapons. I can probably fix the gun, maybe, or help. Sorry, Vito. Oh, oh, that would be and, wonderful. Uh, you see, when you conjure flames, one of the auto gnomes that is just working away, its head just rotates completely around like an owl's head and looks at you, Merylwyn, and it says, Ah, yes, you have access to flame. Perhaps you would like to make use of our Borley Drac as well. We are quite proud of her. We call her Lucille. A uh, oh, what? A oh, what? <laughs> Borley Drac? A boiler Drac. And it is right over there. It is under the tarp. We were keeping it covered up for a special occasion, but this is as good as any. And it's still working in the other direction, so it's kind of off-putting, this, like, unblinking face looking at you all. And it just, like, rotates a little, and it's like, you can use you, Lucille, if you like. Is it like a boiler room dragon? <laughs> oh. You see the eyes narrow slightly, and it just says, mm, honestly, sort of, the best that we could do. Okay. Cool. Okay. I yeah. I'm gonna slowly go over to this tarp and like peek underneath it. <laughs> with as, the holding the fire. <laughs> as uh, as you lift it up, uh, that is exactly what it looks like. Uh, it is about. Um, uh, it looks like 
roughly like a metal dragon. It's about the size of a wagon, and there is a big spout on one end. And as you all look at it, it just says, uh, yes, you point the spout at the thing that you want burned up, and then you pull the switch, and by whoosh. And I'm actually going to send you all a picture of what the boiler drag looks like. That's cool. Sick. It is like a... Oh, oh wow. But that's a mechan oh. mechanical flame catapult thing. Yeah. Yeah, and as you all are like, ooh, and ah, the autonome is like, ah, yes, that is the normal reaction. Ooh, and then ah, and then ah, I'm on fire. Uh, but, you know, we will still well, get to that you took a fine later. time to bring up Lucille, that's for sure. Well, it is never a bad time to bring up Lucille. Oh, that could be useful. Yeah. <laughs> and his head just, like, rotates back around, and it goes back to what it's doing. Um, yeah, I'd like to get Lucille going to be like... <laughs> <laughs> it, it is just like <laughs> and like flames just kind of start shooting out of the sides of it uh, as as it starts up and Lucille does have her own stats which I will also give you all there yeah it is like <laughs> out, out the sides yep yeah. it says yes you can project a cone of flame out in front also, be advised, if Lucille takes too much damage, she will probably detonate, inflicting uh, not insignificant damage on her nearby area. So, plan A, do not allow Lucille to be destroyed. Plan B, do not be around when Lucille is destroyed. Okay. okay. Plan C, okay. we allow Lucille to be destroyed when it is in the clutches of perhaps powerful draconic creatures, perhaps? Mm. An interesting stratagem. It's mm. a good idea. Mm -hmm. Just make sure it's on the red one. Yes. <laughs> well, I was thinking that if that large red one does come after us again, it, if worst comes to worst, perhaps uh, being able to, it, if it picks up Lucille or if we bait it into uh, landing close to it, we could perhaps set it to detonate it. May, uh, if we I have to fight know. this creature. I don't know if Lucille would be of affected be against fire. a massive red yeah, dragon. That's like, yeah, that's the problem. Red dragon's fire, not so bad, actually. Um, the brain vacation's just catching up with me. <laughs> <laughs> I really need to take one of those someday. That sounds lovely. No, mm -hmm. I don't see that. You, you, when, um, when you say that uh, fire is not too effective on a giant red dragon, uh, from outside... Um, hang on, sorry, one second. From outside, you hear Char is, says, Mass, rust, fire, ineffective against red dragons. We are, of course, great and formidable. <clears throat> yes, that's it. Uh, yes, yes, we are the most fearsome of the dragon kind. Yes. You know, I, <laughs> you know, I, I realized you've had, um, this coin has occupied a lot of your attention lately, but it's don't forget your fearsome mount. <laughs> well, yes. no, I, I would, no, I could never. I wouldn't summon you. <laughs> oh, my. Even, um, even I know uh, that was awkward. And you see, um, Chuck does like very slowly creep up to you, Meryl, when it's just like, Okay, I know that wasn't cool. I mean, I didn't really, I, was, I wasn't too clear on the Simon backstory, but I mean, it kind of caught on to the subtext of the fact that he was a friend that she lost and got back, and then now Rust is like saying, it's like implying that Chuck is the same as forgetting, and I mean, that's kind of right? cool. Yeah, that's, um, <laughs> Also, oh, and, and, also um, hi, Simon. Hi, Simon. My name is Chuck. Hi. Yeah, right. Simon leaps onto uh, Chuck's back. Oh, is it like... supposed to do that? Is it supposed to yeah, do yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, oh, oh. he's, oh, he's, no he's fine. He's oh. fine. And no, then, okay. and then, and then, and then he turns in a little circle and is like, starts oh. leading. Oh, oh. and that sort of is that also a sign of affection? Because it's yeah, 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 yeah. But no nails, no nails. Oh, okay. And so it's just a little, just a little Fe massage. It feels like somebody's so, making biscuits back there. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Oh. No, you got to understand where we come from. We're all sort of predators and something being on your back like is generally negative, you know? So I, so I, yeah. I was like, ah, you know, I was like, ah. Yeah. Okay. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. All right. This is, you know, this is kind of cool. I'm just going to like sit. We're just going to chill. We're going to find a little, little patch of sunshine. Did you guys notice like the weather's cleared up? 
like a lot. Ooh, we don't mm. like that. Solak goes outside. As, <laughs> well, Solak, you see two things. Uh, one, presumably with the death of Soth, the weather has cleared up a lot. Uh -huh. And you can see dragons. Yep. A lot. Uh, they're still some distance away, but they're heading this direction. Like, often they, they, they look like little M birds off there, but you're like, oh, but I know what that is. Eyes <laughs> so, from Dunland. Yeah. <laughs> Solid. So, uh, there's a lot. Well, it's a beautiful day outside. Oh. There are also a countless number of draconic figures that are currently headed this way. <sighs> So, uh, uh, yes. Do you have a way of contacting? Do you do you know? Can you can you converse with Tikesis? Can you send Almost a message? Yeah. So, Lock, you know you can call her, but you know you can't make her answer. Like all yeah, gods, yeah. really. <laughs> yeah, assuredly. Would do you think that Tikesis would allow us to leave Cream if I give her? the soul cage with Soth. I think she would allow the chance. I don't think it would just be a given gift. She would no. she would give us the opportunity and make us earn it. Mm. I think that may be the best we can hope for. Uh, I am I had no intention of taking the soul with me. I was planning to give it to either the Knights of Soulmania, but if this will buy us at least an advantage in escaping, I'm more than happy to give it to Her Majesty. Uh, but I have no means of contacting her. I have no means of communicating with her. He puts his hand out. Miria will take it. So, so Locke, is it your intent to call Tachesis? It is, in fact. Um, what specifically, what, what specifically, what message do you intend to send to her? Uh, the, the message that he's sending is that he has come into the possession of the soul of Soth and his companions would like an opportunity to leave this place safely. He doesn't expect an immediate stop of what is coming, but instead wants an advantage so that they have a greater chance and the weaker of her draconic army are cold anyways in the process. As you sort of close your eyes and you hold Miria's hand and you think about this, all of you see what looks like a massive red dragon head just sort of appear in the air, a head even bigger than Ember. And it's sort of, and like you see the crew kind of starts to scatter in panic and the eyes look around and she goes, uh, yeah, oh, oh, wait, sorry, I'll, mm, and it changes into the face of a woman wearing a dragon helmet. She goes, that, that's a habit. So I just, I mean, I, I never really get tired of that. Like, ah, oh, it's for you. <laughs> you know, um, so lock. Yes. Although I am great and powerful and, of course, infallible, on occasion, messages are lost in transition. Did you say the soul of Sa? I did indeed. And you see her eyes rotate and look at you, Miria. And she Miria says, curtsies deeply. Your majesty. Was this your doing, wizard? It was. Hmm, and you do see hands come into frame here as she's thinking. She says, well, uh, never let it be said that Tachesis is unreasonable. Here is what I'm prepared to do. I will redirect my forces. Unfortunately, Ember is a little bit of a force of nature. Are you all familiar with a comet's physics? Just just flaming objects that just much go in a direction until they crash into something? It's a, hmm. Ember's going to do what Ember does. However, I can ensure that Ember comes alone. That's your chance. Isn't that kind? 
and instead of the crushing might of my oncoming forces, just my strongest lieutenant, which again, you have to see this from my perspective. It's win-win because either Ember's going to win and Ember's going to bring me the Soul Assault or you're going to win and you're going to bring me the Soul Assault. And either way, oh. I did oh. what I was supposed to do and, and everybody ends up happy. I will have such delicious torments in store for that day. I just, also, oh. also, also, bonus, I myself won't get involved. Your Majesty is most kind and most generous. Uh, there is something to... Uh, I am afraid that if, if I were to perish, I am not sure if the soul would remain contained, but, but of course, we would be most gracious to accept your, your lovely offer uh, most kindly. <laughs> Would perhaps, yeah. Your Majesty, as this was my doing, and I know that Your Majesty is, would understand a woman who seeks to empower herself, would you so like perhaps... Take, so like, let's go of your hand and takes a step back as you start to fire <laughs> this. You didn't agree to that. You didn't agree to bring his mom here for you to make when, a deal with her. When you let go of the hand, she does not disappear. And you all clearly see yeah. this. Like, I mean, you see and hear this. Is is Takesis yeah. is looking at Maria and Mary, Maria is bargaining. Just a small portion of perhaps some magical power. Uh, a gift for the one who captured the soul of Soth. That's right. I did it with my sword. That, was not <laughs> that, that, that is true. We all observed. He did. They poke, and the death knight he just collapsed yeah. to the ground. It was like, ah. he yeah, poked yeah, him. Yeah. Poked death knight. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you accept power, you're accepting to be a symbol. You see, she but turns and looks at you, Solok, and she goes, "Yes. What kind of monster would accept my blessing and become a symbol on my behalf?" Oh. oh. I know uh, the choice sim. I've made, but I am not planning to leave. A, a symbol? Guy. No, no, no. Perhaps there is a, a misunderstanding. I am simply asking if Her Majesty would be kind and generous enough to reward the one who captured the soul of her enemy with a small trinket, a, a, a gift of power or a, a relic of some kind, something to help me with my own ambitions. I do not intend to be a servant or a symbol, but just a something from one ambitious woman to another. She looks at you and you see a, a smile comes across her face. And she looks she looks at all of you. And, and she he's not she, an alignment, Mark. She's I mean I'm here to tell you that it is. Um you're like, she looks at you and she says, Miria Arathrin, I, Takesis, the Dragon Queen, mighty and powerful, benevolent and beautiful, will remember your name. And she vanishes. Oh, well. And you At see least... the the gnome whose head is rotated around is just like, um, was that good for us or bad for us? I think it's left to be determined. Very much. But I do think that Takesis will honor at least the first part, the initial agreement. We should have at least hopefully avoided most of our army. I will say, e even as you see off in the distance, now that Solok has pointed this out to you, there is clearly like a bunch of it breaks off and starts going a different direction. But there is a, still one massive silhouette that is getting larger coming your direction. So he too can die. Or at least be distracted enough. But, but Miria, will it, will it be worth it f for you? All, all of this? Yes, of course. Of course, darling. I, I don't... Uh, I wish to leave this place. I have ambitions of my own. A small fragment of Tiamat's power would have been a very useful boon to what I intend to do. If I had the opportunity, I will likely never have this opportunity again. Soth is not a creature I can keep with me forever. Soth will break free eventually. Whilst I have the opportunity, I must try and push it forward. I'm just, I'm just worried. 
That is very sweet of you, Sentry, but please, you don't need to worry about me. <laughs> I'm not sorry. We how? Should... <laughs> yeah. We should consider how we're going to deal with Ember, however. <laughs> so, here's how we're going to do this. You will each have an opportunity to do three things before Ember is here. Three things total in terms of uh, trying to get the barn out of the way in terms of any buffs or preparation or uh, anything that you want to do. So here's how I will do this, um, just to, to keep it simple. Uh, we'll just kind of go around the horn here and you just tell me the thing you want to do and then we'll go around again, then we'll go around again. Because who knows, pending what one of your one of your companions does might alter your plan. Um, so I'm going to go in the order that you all are on my screen here. So again, you have uh, theoretically trying to get this barn out of the way so the ship can take off, helping the ship take off or preparing for Embers arrival. So... First time, first round, Solok, what would you like to do? Um, Solok is going to use Tempest to try to use their lightning to blast as much of like the lid of the barn away that they can, uh, assumedly aiming for spots that are more dilapidated and broken down and then trying to use the lightning in partials like sparsity so it's not to ignite any of the like dry wood perfect i'm not even gonna ask you to roll this is just what what's your intention that 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 is what Solok is doing all right leanne mm -hmm. uh leanne is gonna use her wall of thorns to try and start pushing some of the walls of the barn back perfect kind of pushing it so that it will uh give you more room and when it collapses it's not just gonna fall on everybody's head mm-hmm Perfect, Marilyn. Um, I'm going to use my big dragon boiler <laughs> thing um, to try and push one of the side walls down, like kind of to make space so that it, um, the ship can get out. So probably like where the ship needs to head out towards. Um, so it has a clear. You can use Lucille to try and make a hole. Yeah. Uh, make, yeah. As you turn it on and the flames leap out, like all six auto gnomes kind of in union are like, oh, <laughs> this is Lucille comes on there. Perfect. Um, um, Miria? So I think if uh, if Meryl and that are taking care of the roof, uh, Miria might actually offer to try and help with the ship and fixing the cannon uh, using Arcana, because these ships seem to have lots of magical components. If it I can. Is it is, in fact, a magical device. Uh, you've not seen its like, but the principles are sound. All right, Mary is going to help with the ship. Excellent. Rust? Um, I was thinking of doing ship's cannon as well, but if uh, if Mary is Might need able to extra help on it. Uh, no, <laughs> yeah. wait, let, let me, to, to be clear, I'm keeping track of who's helping with the ship, who's helping with the barn, okay. who's preparing for Ember. And so then, yes, that will all cannon. affect what's going to happen. All right, so Rust is also helping. I have a lot of experience with black powder weapons. It's in Sorry. you are a sailor also, mm -hmm. you know, uh, perfect in Sentry. Um, Sentry will, I guess Sentry will then prepare for Ember's arrival and she'll, um, get a bless on everybody. Um, and then, yeah, she'll step outside and just get ready for Ember to come down. Perfect. Try and anticipate. Um... Century, or more accurately, Root. Root sent Century here to retrieve this lost soul um, in hearken unto all things heroic. Is there anything in particular that Root has said in the past that might be running through Century's head right now? Hmm. Um... Uh, brain. Um, I also, since Root in a way is here, is there anything that Root I'm gonna say, Root, if you want me to, yeah. yeah, I can try and help you out on it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think that it maybe not necessarily 
words, but Sentry would feel that connection back to Erois. Um, and uh, and maybe it would be a case of something like, uh, maybe it wouldn't necessarily be something Root said in the past, but like a, a very faint, distant voice now, mm. um, which is uh, something along the lines of, and it's going to be weird doing this voice whilst in this getup, but Sentry, uh, it may not be possible for you to physically bring this guardian back to us. But if you can make their safety, if you can ensure that they are protected, that they can find their own way back to us, that would be the duty of the Prime. Okay. I'll make sure the path to Aroa stays open however I can. Now, I know Sentry just gave me what she was going to do at the bottom of the first round, but I'm actually just kind of going to reverse and go back around the horn. So, second action. Sentry's second action. Uh, what would she like to do? Um, I, th I guess then she would then, Sentry would enlarge and hold up the walls of the barn to make sure that if they come down, they come back down controlled and safely. Perfect. And again, as Sentry grows and begins to push up on this thing, and it kind of groans as she pushes against it, the auto gnomes again, all in unison, are like, oh, <laughs> as this huge construct uh, is helping. Excellent. Rust, again, just to clarify, you all can keep doing the same things. You can do different things. It just, I'm just keeping track of who's doing what. So, Rust, okay. second action. Uh, you are muted. I think I'm going to keep working on that gun. Keep working on the gun. Perfect. All right. All right, Miria, second action. Uh, so I think Miria will do a uh, cast a like a fifth level animate dead, and she kind of pulls all these bones out of her bag of holding, and then summons these uh, animates these skeletons to act as like more hands to help with the ship. So she's basically going to like increase the amount of workforce we have to like do manual tasks. So maybe the auto gnomes and the experts in the spell jammer can actually do the more complicated work. Perfect. And you see as these skeletons spring to life and start banging on the ship, the crew is like, ah, oh, this is a, oh, that's, that's, these are, they're, they're, do those bite? No, no, they won't bite. They're here to help. Tell them, tell me what you need them to do and I will ensure that they do it. Manual labor only, no difficult tasks. You know, that's not even the weirdest thing that I've seen today. Okay, great. Um, Meryl Wynn, second action. Um, I think I'm going to still use Lucille to try and like break away some more of the barn. I see that Sentry is like holding a bit nice and gently, so I'll kind of like go for that area and try and push away underneath as well. Perfect. Uh, still working on the barn. Leanne, second action. Uh, still going to be using that wall of thorns to keep Perfect. pushing those walls back. Helping with the barn again. Perfect. Solok. Solok is going to go outside and uh, I'm going to decide which ones, but he's going to start conjuring fey spirit. So he's going to conjure animals to try and create beasts that will be something else to distract Ember as he like approaches. So like probably like larger birds or something of the sort. It might be a giant eagle or otherwise. You see like all the dragon elves sort of like pop up as like these various plate prey animals start appearing. All five of them are like, do not eat these. These are for a distraction. So you don't get eaten. And you see Spark is like, I mean, if you're summoning them, can we just eat some of them? Because, I mean, it's like, it's look at the size of that bird. Look, look the if there are any left, sure. They don't taste good from my experience, but hey, to each their own. <laughs> uh, and third action, I'm going to go just kind of in a, in a different order here. I'm actually going to go with Rust first for the third action. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get in the gun. <laughs> Prepare to man the gun. Perfect. Get in the gun, Shinji. No, get, I'm no, get, get in, in the, the gun. gun not get, get in the gun. <laughs> it's my ult. Right. That is. Um, you, you, that nine means lives. you have to let it work, B Dave, because it's in the game. <laughs> it's yeah. in the game. It's in the game. It has to work. It's literally in the game. She's a nine, cannon. 
nine lives is like, um, arrest. I do not mean to misrepresent my power. I mean, I, I have seen nine lives. See, I, me. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. if you like you shoot as the cannon, I mean, I don't know that I can like transfer like a life to you, you know? Trust I, me, I've done this so many times. It's, it, you have hurdled yourself out of a ship-sized cannon at a gargantuan red dragon while escaping a like desolate hellscape back to its space to return to your homeland. You have done this multiple times? Okay, well, not that it's a big red dragon, but uh, it, 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 uh, other ships, which means that if we miss a land in the sea. So frankly, this is less intimidating than uh, well, every other time I've done it. Uh, well, my friend, uh, I am with you all the way to the end. Please make sure that I am, like, secured in a pouch. I think your hands are going to be full. And while you're hurtling through the air and doing the, like, flaming and screaming, I don't want to get dropped. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Third action. Uh, so I already have my skeleton crew out, my dance macabre uh, crew. Um, so I am going to... Uh, I'll spend my last one preparing for Ember, and I'll <laughs> activate my Cube of Force to protect me from magical and spell effects and hopefully uh, negate that breath weapon if it comes near me. So uh, is, is it your intent to activate this on board the ship? So theoretically, if the ship moves, Miriam moves with it? Uh, I mean, that is how it would work if I was on board the ship. But, um, I think, like, if everybody else is staying outside the ship, then Miria will stay with them. If everyone moves onto the ship, Miria will move onto the ship. Well, let, let me, uh, allow me to clarify, uh, mm. you know, is it you, who, let's just do it real quick. If your intent is to be on the ship when the ship lifts off, just raise your hand. <laughs> oh, right, I see. Because right. I didn't know yeah, if, like, right. Ember was going to land yeah. first and then we would fight and then the well, ship would escape. There's, there's a variety of ways this might play okay. out, quite okay. frankly. <laughs> That's one of the things I'm keeping okay. track of. You might you might fight Ember in the sky, you might fight Ember on the ground. So uh, uh, In that case, then, mm -hmm. I will... Uh, I won't activate my cube of force. I will get on the ship mm -hmm. and then, you know what? I think I might just have to use... Uh... Ooh, I will save it. So just before Ember arrives, uh, mm -hmm. I will use my ninth level spell and cast Invulnerability on myself. Excellent. Uh, you can assume that when the when actual conflict begins, that that has happened, Maria. Yeah. And uh, then up Mar until then, I guess like helping prepare for Ember by like you know helping organize defenses and things like that. So. Perfect, Marilyn. Third action. Okay, I'm gonna go to Solak and be like, right, I need to, your knowledge on dragons. Sure. Do do, do red dragons hate the rain by any chance? Putting a red dragon in rain might be to your advantage because they do run hot, so you could create steam. Mm hmm. Okay, how, uh, question for B Dave, how far away is Ember now time wise? In imminent. I mean, it, it's imminent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit too well, late. Okay. Well, well, uh, what, what, what is it that you were trying to accomplish? Because the whole point I'm is like, we, we were like you were preparing for Ember's arrival. I would like to um, control the weather and make it rain. Make it rain. <laughs> <laughs> Could do Leanne it. help? Because Leanne's about to do some call some lightning up in the sky. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, mm -hmm. I, I, w I will say the two of you. I appreciate that it's like it has just kind of been gray and black for months. And then it's like sunshine. Everybody's like, hooray. Storm. <laughs> right. Uh, yes, I, I, I will say by Leanne and Marilyn's power combined, you, you can summon a sufficient storm uh, for, for the thing that you are trying to do. All right, right, hang on. You just hear from inside the cannon. Oh, come on! <laughs> <laughs> uh, perfect. Uh, now let me make sure that I'm I'm doing this uh, right my own way. Solok, third action. He gets on Tempest's back, and they go mm -hmm. above the roof, mm -hmm. and he pulls out his bow and prepares an arrow and. Just whenever Ember is within 150 feet, he's going to conjure a volley of just arrows to try to turn his wings into pinpricks and like a pincushion, hopefully to debilitate some of his speed or make him a little bit slower on his approach. Perfect. And last but certainly not least, Sentry's third action. Um, I was thinking before Solak gets on Tempest and flies up, I was going to cast... Um protection from energy on Solak and give him um, fire resistance. What, if anything, does Sentry say to Solak before this happens? I think 
It's more of like a, I think Sentry just look at Solak and it'll be kind of like a, a knowing like nod, like, we've got this, like, we can do this. Before he lifts, he, uh, there's, there's a confident stare. I hope to see your home one day. I hope to come back to this one when everything's all fixed. You always have a home here, Sentry. You will have a home on Aroas. And you see Tempest looks at Sentry and looks at you and is like... (laughs) 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 Off into the sky. Perfect. Um, I I want you all to know that that could have gone very poorly, pending how you chose, but you balanced this out pretty well. The ship rumbles to life. Um, It just sort of hums really but since this was built for gif hippo people um it is as stout as they are and it is like even as it starts up and your your gif crewman just kind of slaps the cannon and is like yes told you never bet against gif engineering and uh sort of pokes his head in the cannon at you uh rust and he's like might want to clear out of there as the, when the flames erupt, sort of cataclysmic flame and shrapnel and projectile. And don't know even if you're standing on the cannonball. I don't know what that is going to be like the smartest move. Is that is that your intent that we just shoot you at the at the dragon? That's what you yeah. want to do? Yeah, it's been fun before. How could it possibly be different here in a, in a world I've never been before? I mean, again, I just do not bet against GIF engineering, of course. Um, but uh, this cannon has not been fired in centuries. It just... Uh, be... well, then, we better make man. it count. If we all live through this, first round's on me. What? You see the ship sort of rumbles and thanks to your preparations does make its way out of the barn and begins lifting up into the sky as the rain is starting to swirl around here. And Solok, as you are up in the air and you see Ember coming and he's big enough to see you and you just see a smile go across his face as he dips down into the clouds and vanishes. And as you all are coming up, you see as the clouds erupt into flames one by one the actual sky catches on fire and explodes uh as everybody hits the deck here as ember comes erupting out of it and just flies straight towards you and says i guess you all have chosen the losing side and that's a good place for us to take a break but i should point out before we do it was voted on by the good people of Idol Champions that Ember went into the battle spectacularly by literally setting the sky on fire. <laughs> so we will do a quick 10, quick 10, uh, and we will come back for a calamitous battle with a truly terrible foe, but I'm sure it's going to be fine. Most of y'all have to return to your home world, except, you know, Three of you aren't on other shows, and one of you is a soul fragment. Ah, it's going to be all right, though. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Don't worry about it. It's going to be all right. So, <laughs> we will be right back. Hello, it is I, B. Dave Walters, your humble dungeon master, and my pronouns are he, him. I'm Johnny Chiodini. My pronouns are they, them. I'm playing Rust on the Harbor, he, him, a tabaxi rogue. Hi, I am Rhiannon Frost. My pronouns are she, they. I'm playing Sentry, she. And she is a guardian paladin. Hi, my name is Gabe Hicks. My pronouns are he, they. And I am playing Solak, the Kalashtar Ranger, whose pronouns are also he, they. Hi, I'm Ellen Rose. My pronouns are she, her. And I am playing Meryl Wen, whose pronouns are she, her, who is a wood elf druid. I like to turn into cats sometimes. Hi, everybody. I'm Mark Humes, also known as Sherlock Humes. Uh, he, him, she, they, whatever you want, really. I, I do everything, really, myself. Uh, and I'm going to be playing uh, Miria Elithrin, uh, who is she, her, who is a Silver Nastry elf, kind of a disguised Chadarkai elf, uh, necromancy wizard. 
there's no point, Mark. I'm telling you, just kill them all. I mean, resurrection magic is easy. Like, you don't have to go easy on people. Just like, Mark, like even with it, I'll do this it. is literally the I... conversation we had. Mark, <laughs> I'll, take that. I'll bite that bullet. I'll come in, I'll guess, yeah. I'll kill them all. Then it's like, Gabe, why would you do that? Because you can. <laughs> <laughs> Pe people bring, routinely bring me in to play their big bads. And I ask, I'm like, I mean, you want me to do what I do, or do you want me to do what you do? You know what I mean? Because I'm like, I'll kill everybody. I don't care. You know? Hey, <laughs> resurrection. I mean, that's that's why Gabe and I get along. That's true. We're so, the just Speaking for off. the opportunity. Speaking of the problem, for once, for once, out of six episodes, I remembered, and only because I have a visual reference, there's a Beetle and Grimm's giveaway that is going to open uh, at the end. It is the Bard dice, which is the dice I have. Uh, and he kind of looks like me a little bit. So, yes, there will be a drawing near the end. And, again, it is only because I've had this sitting here in front of me every week to be like, one of these weeks it'll be the Bard dice. They're super mm -hmm. cool. Okay. Perfect. Ember, the dragon has made his spectacular entrance. And uh, Meryl went in Leanne, although he has destroyed your magical storm, it was not wasted because he was going to do a truckload of damage uh, with that initial conflagration uh, that I will balance out by having consumed the storm instead. As the ship is lifting off and you are all aboard, except for Solok that is out riding on Tempest, and Ember is in the now red sky, wreathed in flames. Iris just sort of yells out over it, okay, um, so I know that I look fearsome, but I'm actually not too terribly useful in a fight, but I can help a little bit. And you all feel a warm glow in your chest as the good people of Idol Champions have voted that Iris would present you with a minor buff Here's what Iris's buff is. You can repeat one failed save at some point during this conflict. One. And that's what she can do for you. There is nothing else to say now except roll initiative. Oh, no. No. Okay. Almost, <laughs> almost lost my good guy. Oh, Ellen. You know, again, you're not going last. You're going first in the second round. It's fine. Uh, one. <laughs> oh my you know a lot you know it's simon is just like <laughs> and, and you know ember is like i'm fire i'm deaf and you're like russ uh 16. all right leanne 17. Miria. Also 17. Oh no, it's going to start again. <laughs> a new Meryl matching went. friend. That's a, that's a chonk one. Uh, again, not happy. going last in the first round, going first in the second round. Sentry. 14. Oh, y'all are about to be in trouble. Solok, come on, give him a chance. 18. Oh, y'all. Unfortunately for you, he's going to go first. Hell yeah. All right. Um,. Leanne and Miria, I leave it to decide between the two of you, the order. Oh, technically, Leanne, you, you will act Technically, you will act simultaneously. You first, Leanne. I imagine you have better decks than me, so. A plus four on her. You are, you, you should go first. Okay. Uh, excellent. Um, so, Locke, we're just gonna mm -hmm. let fate decide if you are within range of the flaming breath or not. So, just roll, roll a 20. within 150 feet? Yeah, he's big. Well, is he, is he within 150 feet? Because that yes. arrow thing would go off. So I want to pierce him, even if he's going to torch me. Uh, that was one of my three actions. You know what? Hold on. We're, we're, we're just going to... let's First, just roll a 20. No no modifiers. Just roll it. That is a 19. Uh, you will not be in range of his flaming breath, because it was just going to be a, but a straight roll. I only got a 13. Uh, but yes, you can make your your archery attack. And he just needs to make a deck save. Okay. He is shockingly dexterous to be the size of a 747. Uh, I'm pretty sure he is going to make it. As he just sort of like rotates as the wings are, as the arrow hitting. He, he does make it. Is, is, is it a, um, yeah, he got it's a 26. Uh, so then yep. he takes 25 points of piercing damage. 
Perfect. As you see the arrows, the, he just spins through it as he's coming forward. Uh, okay, hold on. Let me get his hit points up here. Yo, you get, look, I'm not worried about his hot breath. I'll get him a breath mint. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Unfortunately for the rest of you, you see he inhales, and as he exhales, it is not just fire, but it is flame and ash. And you realize um, this is something completely different uh, that, that this dragon is breathing, the likes of which you have never seen. I need deck saves from everybody but Solak. You'll get a plus three from Sentry's aura. You Ooh, do. Better. That's a 15. 15 for me as well? 28. 28? Yes, 23. 23. Oh uh, uh, fortunately, only Leanne and Rust make the save. Uh, oh. The rest of you take 78 oh, fire Sentry. damage. 23 oh. is not enough. Oh my god. Um, uh, yes. Uh, B Dave, I was going to say, one of my actions was to cast invulnerability on myself. It was. So this, I am, is, this is not counting any mitigation. I am immune uh, to all damage. Okay. Uh, uh, 78 if you did not make the save. 39 fire if you did. Uh, as a 300 foot cone comes out. Also. Uh, the ship does have a, its own hit points, and the ship can be destroyed. However, on that the is deck the save, problem. yes. Uh, however, I rolled a natural twenty on the deck save, so this creaky old ship, which is literally a cannon with a little bit of boat at the back, still somehow is like, <laughs> plus this crazy corkscrew as the flames go off. And you hear the auto gnomes are just what? <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, uh, one thing, the crew of the Delight Fantastic, they seem like buffoons, but when things go, like they're a legit crew. Uh, perfect. That brings us to uh, Solak. You were up. It's horrifying. Did not expect that to go as badly as it did. Um, <laughs> Actually, just, and... wait, sorry, hang on. I forgot just one little thing. You know, just a tiny little thing. Uh, I need all of you to make con saves. Mm -hmm. Oh, a tiny little thing. It's a tiny, mm -hmm. it's a tiny save. Ah! Uh, this is, it, it is, there is a damage effect uh, and a fright effect, so still make the save no matter what. Okay. Sorry, apologies, everyone. So lock. 26. Uh, Leanne. 19. Miria. 23. Um, Rust. 7. <laughs> In century. 23. Uh, and Merylwyn. 21. You needed 22. No! Uh, everyone that got 21 or less takes seven fire damage not too bad huh. but you are frightened of ember uh which means disability on ability and attack rolls while you can see him uh, and you cannot move willingly move closer however rust i'm going to say you theoretically are about to be propelled by forces outside your control what? uh so <laughs> seven points of fire and frightened Frightened, frightened, frightened. Um, until the start, uh, until the start of Ember's next turn. So if I don't remember to say so, uh, it wears off uh, at the beginning of next round. Sorry, so long. Please proceed. Uh, no, that's fine. That's fine. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, it's fine. We're, don't worry about it. We're it's just, all good. We're just gonna we're gonna go right in. Um, flying in with Tempest. Tempest is immediately going to shoot out uh, his Drake breath. So that is another Dexterity saving throw. Mm. Uh, what's he need? 17. It's exactly what he got was 17. Nice. Uh, so then take half, so we'll take... You, you see he just pulls his wing in front of him, and as he gets closer, you realize this dragon is wearing armor. 
uh, it's not so dissimilar to what Takesis had on his helmet and on his chest and on his claws. And his claws are sharpened with long metal spikes. And he blocks this as it comes in. And he just says, um, pitiful blue whelp, you'll learn your place. Mm. So but he takes 20 points of lightning. 20 lightning. He disrespected my homie. <laughs> that's a, as he free, puts, a free action blatant disrespect as he puts action. the wing up uh, Solok <laughs> would have actually leapt off of Tempest so as the mm -hmm. wing comes down Solok is making a strike with the sword of Zario and tele telepathically he tells Tempest I think Rust is going to fire himself from that gun please uh, catch him after <laughs> he, he's going to fire himself on purpose Look, he's a cat man. Nothing about these people makes sense. It's nothing about these people makes sense. But yes, fine. I will. I, I saw him climb in the gun. On purpose. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. So you're jumping off onto Ember, is what I'm hearing. Uh, I'm gonna make a strike with the sword of Zario. Roll it. That is a 23 hit. That is enough. Uh, so that is, and I'm going to use my reaction to add lightning damage from Tempest into this as well. So a total of, oh, that could have better, um, 32 points of damage on the first strike. Okay. Second strike. It was 32, you say? Yes. Okay. 20 to hit uh 20 is not enough 24 is oh 24 is enough oh, oh, don't, don't skate like that <laughs> <laughs> and then 36 points of damage on this against strike perfect you all see solok leaps on the back of this dragon and just like <laughs> like electricity going off and he's like <laughs> and looks up at you anything else from solok It's a shame you were her strongest lieutenant, because you won't account to much. <sighs> and it's a Disrespecting is a free action, I learned, so. Disrespecting is a free action, <laughs> always. Uh, Solok, oh. you, since you're hanging on his back, he just says, mm, I see your pet is the one with wings. Let's see if you can fly. And <laughs> wing buffets you. I need a deck save, Solok. Bet. It's all right, Rust will catch him if he falls off. <laughs> <laughs> I will well. let you roll for this. You, you all see, Solok, you take 17 points of bludgeoning. And you all see Solok in knocked prone, blown into the air off of Ember's back, just like in free uh, fall here. B Dave, can I ask what, um, how far away is Solok when he begins to fall from Miria? We'll say 120 feet because, uh, I uh, can't help. Yeah, I can't do yep. anything anymore. I don't need yep. help because the sword of Zyro gives me wings. Oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, that Miria doesn't know that Miria was going to That's off. true. That, that is. Thank you. Thank you, so Miria. Your heart was in the right place. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was, however, a legendary. So, um, it is Leanne's turn. Sure. Okay. Um. So I think Leanne is going to. I know she is a feared of Ember, so it's more like a an eat. She's gonna basically call forth Moonbeam, mm -hmm. <laughs> almost as a defense mechanism, more than anything else. Uh, right on top of Ember. Okay. Uh, and that is da, 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 a con save throw. Okay. On your part. Well, uh, what he's got a chunk con bonus. What what, what is it that he needs? Figure. Uh, what does you need? You needs to do a seventeen. Uh, <laughs> he does make the save. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you his con is plus eighteen. So unless he rolls a one, well, it's kind of hard well, to get con to stick wow. to him. But yeah. Yep. Still, damage is damage. Um, mm -hmm. So that is 13 halved of radiant. I'm just, just going to send you guys two pictures to kind of give you a scale for what Ember's yeah. like. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. 
No, he's a big, he's yeah. a big old boy. He's, yeah, he's big. Yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's a yeah. building. That's yeah. a city. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's no. Yeah. He's, he's he's a big old boy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. Although it's sad because he's described as wearing armor, and in the art he doesn't have his armor on, which sucks. I couldn't I couldn't find proper armor artwork of him, but I mean the the concept of a huge red dragon in battle armor is pretty sweet. So <laughs> do with that what you will. Like um, who's making that? <laughs> he, <he's> like, me. <laughs> I mean, with Saul, <laughs> his his army's back. making it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. I can't draw. I paint pictures with words. Internet. I'm just putting that out there. Uh, yeah, yes, please. What was that damage, uh, Leanne? Sorry. It was 13. It'll be halved of radiant. Okay. Perfect. Uh, you see, the moonbeam does. Um, come down on him but he just <laughs> pitiful uh anything else from leanne uh arden's gonna pop out again as sort of her reaction of screeching he telepathically feels her need and jumps mm -hmm. out next to her okay perfect uh does he act now does he have to act later he's going to hold until uh if ember gets closer we'll go in for some bitey bitey Perfect. Um, Miria, your turn. So I think, Miria, the first thing we'd do is if Miria can see that Merylwen is, is being affected by the fear, we'd probably make our way over to Merylwen and just sort of uh, try and reassure and just be like, it's all right, we've got this kind of like, maybe like take her hand if like Merylwen will let her and sort of like hold her hand and squeeze it. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll... And, and you said that this creature is like 120 feet away currently, the, the actual dragon itself. Uh huh. Um, in that case, uh, the only thing Miria can do, because all of my spells are currently out of range, I will ready an action that when it is within uh, 60 feet, I will cast a uh, spell. I'll cast Dissonant Whispers. Because um, I have a feeling that this thing's mind, I'm hoping, is not as strong as its <laughs> flesh. Perfect. But uh, just remind me, essentially at the bottom of the round, that will uh, that will take place. Okay. Um, perfect. Um, Rust. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> shall we? He, you, oh, I just need to look up one thing. I apologize <laughs> oh, here. Um, you, Rust, as you are tucked into the um, uh, into the cannon here, um, mm -hmm. you see this uh, this gif leans forward and just looks in there, and it goes. Are you absolutely sure about this, uh, old boy? This is you. Hmm? Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, let's let's do it. You see, um, oh shoot, where's my guy? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Again, I'm like so many tabs I have going right now. Um, there he is over there. His name's Allred. Allred. Um, he just like reaches in and hands you a flask, and he says. My mother once told me that if you cannot dodge the cannonball, ride the cannonball, but then get out of the way of the cannonball before it does cataclysmic damage. Well, clearly your mother was never a cannonball. <laughs> well, I, I mean, that is not what the insults at the academy said, but eh, fine, okay. Um, oh. Hold on. Oh, uh, actually, don't hold on. You don't want to hold on. You actually want to go with it here. But just, uh, just try and stay limber, I think. Yes, um, oh, <clears throat> all right. Yes. Good luck. Boom, Thank you, Red. Uh, <laughs> Rust, do you want to roll for the gun, or do you want me to roll for the gun? Why don't you roll for the gun? Oh, no. <laughs> Perfect. Hang on. Oop. Hang on. I let me check the check the guns. The guns plus to hit. Oh no! I didn't roll well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a one. It wasn't a one. This is not. Uh, oh shoot. Uh, oh, I know this vibe. Right. Yeah, I know. Sorry, so many things no, open, no, uh, open right now. Um, rust. The cannon uh, is going to fly wide, unfortunately, but it is going to get you close enough to do something. Here's... Okay. Uh, and you um, see Ember sees the cannonball coming and looks right at you riding on it and says, 
That is the biggest, slowest cannonball I have ever seen in my life. And just sort of rotates slightly <laughs> as the cannonball goes hurdling past. Uh, but you can act. Um, I would, I would like to try and uh, get my feet under me as I'm flying through the air on a slow cannonball. And kind of try and <laughs> ping off and just like... With the rapier out in front, just turn myself into like a tabaxi dart. Yes. Luigi from Smash Brothers. You absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You absolutely can. I need, yeah. uh, but, uh, however, um, you. Oh, there we go. Hang on. No, that's not that. What the heck? This is, uh, I've got everything but the stats of this freaking gun. Anyhow, um, you can. However, you will roll with disadvantage because you are afraid. That is... Oh, of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought you were going to say because it's a stupid idea. No. <laughs> no stupid if not oh. now. If not now, when? With, oh, with disadvantage like this. 21? Uh, that is not enough to damage him, but I will say it is enough to land on him. Okay. Um, okay. It's, uh, you land, uh, as he is rotating just kind of on his neck, and you see one of his eyes rotates around, and just the pupil is bigger than you. And he says, get off me, flee. And he is going to take a claw attack at you, which is almost certainly going to hit. Oh, probably. Because he has, again, a not insignificant plus attack bonus. Um... And he is going to claw you for 19 points of damage. And he grabs you. Uh, you are grappled. Um, oh, you are grappled and restrained. Mm. Uh, as you all see, he grabs Rust and just has him in his hand. Uh, anything, else from, <laughs> anything else from Rust? So Solok is plummeting. Let's just check in. Solok plummeting to his doom. Rust mm -hmm. held in the dragon's claw <laughs> here as the dragon is about to arrive at the ship. Uh, perfect. But that makes it Sentry's turn. Um, I'm going to cast Moonbeam on him at level four. Perfect. Con save, correct? Yes, please. Uh, everyone again, knows Moonbeam is the best spell. It's, <laughs> We're going to have three moon Moonbeams, like all the yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. he also, I mean, and it's it's even weirder because it is just like broad ass daylight right now. It's still Moonbeams are coming down. <laughs> um, he, again, he is going to make the save with a 30, but uh, you enough. will do your half damage. Yeah, no problem. Mm -hmm. Uh, and after Sentry, at long last, is Meryl Wynn not going for last in this round, but going first in the second round? Mm -hmm. And um, then af af oh, after that, Mary, uh, your spell can resolve. Edge. Yep. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. But yes on the damage, Sentry. Cool. 22, 11 total. Perfect. As you all see, the moonbeams are hitting, but it's just like reflected off of his scales as he is just coming straight towards you all. Uh, anything else from Sentry? Uh, no, that's it for me. Thank you. Uh, I will say that you are still enlarged from your from your uh, cool. uh, what you did before. Uh, Marilyn, your turn. Um, I'm not feeling too good, uh, so <sighs> I'm gonna mass cure wounds to anyone who's within uh, thirty feet of me. That is um, basically everybody but Solok and Rust. <laughs> Rust. Uh, <laughs> so shooting hmm. this out of the six level it's happening very slowly my internet is chugging slightly it's, this the, the animation is nervous. very a lot slow <laughs> yeah you know it's it's not just you have to turn off all the settings in dnd beyond i could run nasa off of this computer and dnd beyond is still <laughs> like <laughs> yeah you have to turn it all off yeah um well everyone gets a huge 16 hit points. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I like rolled me. real bad. Oh, um, it, it all counts. It all counts. It all counts. Uh, mm -hmm. Perfect. Anything else from Marilyn? Um, 
Marilyn is just checking that like Simon is hidden and out of sight and he's he's okay. Um you know, and because, then you know, I, unlike some dungeon masters who shall not be named but are on this call right now, would never mm. giveth and taketh away Simon. I would say you were <laughs> able to safely stow him below the deck here to keep him out of the range of this. Mark, are you gonna stand for that? <laughs> <laughs> I I guess I am, Johnny. Yes, I guess I'm just gonna have to accept my punishment for being it. such what? a cruel, <laughs> horrible, heartless dungeon master. Well, listen, I shall be sending a very strongly worded email to Coke Name after this. Right? <laughs> I'll yeah, keep an eye out for the email. I already have context. American DMs are nicer. I'm gonna ride this way forever. <laughs> 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 I assure you I'm not. Perfect. Uh, between the, light, the the newly dubbed Light Fantastic 2 and Ember coming your way, you are close enough uh, for your spell to resolve now, if you would like, Maria. Also, uh, does uh, Merylwen and Russ get to save at the end of their turn, or is that fear, like, just permanent? Like, is that it just, is like, locked in? At the start of... <laughs> Okay. Ember's turn. Basically, Ember has to do it every round. Oh, okay. Uh, so otherwise, it, it okay. Runs, okay. Yeah, okay. It, I just wanted to check. Otherwise, right. I would try yeah, doing the thing. Um. Yep. So this is. I mean, it's going to be a fifth level dissonant whispers, which I get thanks to my feat of high sorcery. Uh, it's mm -hmm. a wisdom saving throw DC twenty one. Uh, let's see. Uh, he actually is, boy. He, he is going to make it. Uh, okay. You are correct Half that damage. his wisdom save is less than his con save, but still chunk. Uh, so this is like Miria begins whispering, um, mm. and in his mind he would hear like, "Failure, useless <sighs> child, unfailing." <sighs> yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, that's gonna be fifteen, uh, twenty, twenty-six. So that's only gonna be unfortunately thirteen psychic damage, though. Perfect. Uh, it is all chopping away at him here. Uh. Perfect. Uh, nice excellent. Can do more stuff as well. Uh, as we get around to the top of the second round, hold on. First, let's see if he gets the breath weapon back. He does. He does. Oh, this is going to be bad. You know, chat, I was going to say, you know, this is supposed to be a happy occasion. It's the finale. Should I give them a chance and not have him use the breath weapon? And we all know the answer to that is no. Next <laughs> And Rust, he looks at you. Oh, no. oh. On Rust? All of you. <laughs> yep. Yep. Even you, Solok. Deck saves. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, is, I thought he was just doing it on Rust. I was like, mm -hmm. why no. Would I Rust up to... no, why would I just hurt Rust when I can hurt everybody? Oh, Unfortunately, God. Rust. Uh, you because... said he flew me behind him, though, BD. That was I rubber. said no, no such thing. I said you were falling through the air. You said he and flings he can... you off his back. That, that's Into <laughs> the air. <laughs> <sighs> yep. Uh, remember, unfortunately, well, remember two things. Remember two things. Yes, you have disadvantage, uh, Rust, but also remember, um, Iris's blessing. You all can choose to succeed a save that you have failed before, and the DC on this is significant. So, I'll just go ahead and tell you it's a DC 26. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it is a it's a three hundred foot cone. It's like bah, <laughs> fire. I whatever I roll, I would fail. You get a natural twenty. No, no, no. With my deck, oh, it's based. If wait, if yeah. I have sentries plus. I think B Dave okay. also does. He does the uh, if you roll 20. A twenty, you you succeed yep. anyway. No oh, of course. Yep. Okay, yep. but yep. this a go. God for that. Does anybody? <laughs> oh. Do you... <laughs> <Shut up! Yeah! laughs> <laughs> that little look <laughs> you know yeah. yes you look at simon and simon's like hit the deck <laughs> oh yeah right <laughs> yeah uh does anybody else meet or beat uh 26 yep no, no? 20 for a 27 <laughs> Ooh. You know, you tell me, Solok, what it looks like as you are twisting in midair, and he lines this up. And... <laughs> I I think there's almost, like, a confidence in if he can handle this, he can handle anything. And this is, this is for you guys out there. Um, 
he feels some prime material force around him almost manifest and shield him from this flame in this moment. Unsure of where this power comes from. And he just kind of like slightly looks over his shoulder in the direction of the light fantastic and specifically Sentry. Uh, Did Sentry make the same? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you have this moment, so he's like, oh. <laughs> it's like flames in ash all over this. Um, unfortunately, the ship got a two on its save this time. So you see the bridge in the bow of the ship and even the cannon just like burning and crackling uh, with fire and ash. If you failed, that is 78 fire damage. Oh, uh, I would have been gone. <laughs> and uh, if you succeeded, that is, thir what is that? 39 fire damage? 39 fire damage. Is it 78 uh, was the max? Was the four? Yeah. Yeah. So 30, yeah, 39. Yeah. I'm like, yay, math. Uh, and uh, Rust, how you doing over there, by the way? Oh, I'm, I'm feeling fine. <laughs> uh, you see smoking, Kimber. smoldering. Rust, Rust looks like uh, one of those, like a, uh, a uh, sphinx cat. Oh, you, man. you see Ember <laughs> breathes this out on the deck of the ship, and you see he throws Rust down on the deck and lands. But when he does, he turns back into that black robed wizard. And he just says, you all don't even deserve my true power. And yet, I'm not doing this for you. He turns and he motions over where you can see in the direction of Northland, where those dragons that Takesis sent away are actively attacking the city. And he says, I'm doing it to inspire the legions. And lifts back off again uh, in his dragon form. Uh, but that is, however, all he's going to do. Uh, Solok, your turn. There's a lot happening. A lot. Is um, <laughs> so, so where is Rust right now? He left Rust on the deck of the ship. Uh, he had yeah. him grappled, but like basically yeah. threw him down because he couldn't hold him right. when he flexed okay. in human form and then took right. off again. All right. So I'm not so worried about him. Uh, gonna... You gotta go oh, to. Sorry, sorry. Con saves from everyone again. Those of you that were feared are no longer feared, but there's a chance you're about to be feared again. Oh, con save. I kid you not, Nat twenty again. I'm never using I'm, those. I'm, other than I'm, I'm, but I'm soaking those up when you're not attacking. I'm like, good. I'm saying good. that. You're Use right. That's all worse. Twenty is good. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. Been saving throws. Yes. <laughs> Did I, did I use that ability to re-roll and save oh. for 20? I was going to say, B-Dave, is it a re-roll or is it an auto-success, the blessing that we got? Uh, uh, auto-success if you choose to use it. Uh, Miri I, would like to use it. <laughs> I didn't I didn't realize that we lost Leanne. I'm sure I'm sure she'll yeah, be back at some point. She's trying to yeah. get back in. She's yeah. trying. No uh, problem. Uh, that I is would also it. like to auto-succeed. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Me, me wait. three. <laughs> perfect. So wait, wait. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I say, got that. Say the words, I, Ellen. Well, I re-rolled a twenty. I re-rolled thinking that I would have to re-roll. Hey, everyone. When I didn't have to earlier on, when I got that twenty. Oh. Oh. Or did I? Was that a re-roll? No, no, I think that you just rolled it. I just rolled it. I just rolled it. I'm getting confused. You still have the blessing. Okay. You still have the blessing. A, a, a I would like happening. to use the blessing. Yes, thank Perfect. you. So I can do um, something. <laughs> you hear from down in the deck, uh, Leanne, where con save against Ember Sphere is what we're rolling. Uh, were you still here when the breath weapon went off again? Uh, you are muted, ma'am. Uh, no, no, I think you're, you're muted, on the wrong just... mic. Yeah, you're not muted. It's just it, it reverted to the wrong mic. Uh, surely well, Leanne was just incorporeal at the time. While yeah. Leanne is sorting yeah. that out, uh, it's 20. Can you hear me now? Can, yes. 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 Yay. Yay. Were, were, were you here when the breath weapon went off again? Uh, yeah, I was, and she was going to use her Iris gift to get through that one, so now we're doing fear. Her, her, yeah, this is a con save against fears. 22, unless you're, uh, use, unless you're cashing that in. Uh, if you do not make that 22 con, it is 7 fire, which isn't terrible, but you will be frightened again until the start of Ember's next turn. You all see through one of the, like, broken cracks in the hull, one of Iris's eye stalks comes up and says, 
I assure you, this is the equivalent of me giving you a thumbs up. You've got this, all of you. It's fine. Just fight on. Be brave. I didn't come all this way to die like this. I'd never live it down. And the eye pops back underneath uh, those of you that have made the save. Uh, if not, seven points of fire, frightened. Uh, Solok, I apologize. Your turn. That's fine. You can... Uh, <laughs> This is horrifying. Uh, so since Rust is safely on the ship and I'm not worried about him falling to his doom, um, if you are familiar with Naruto, go out. Whoop. No, no, no. Let, 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 let's let this go how it goes. Yeah. Actually, no. I mean, slight intervention. Do you think? So lock. Mm-hmm. As you are falling through the air. You know what? Actually, you're about to say something about Naruto and I would be remiss to take that away. So please tell me what you were about to say before I say anything else. Uh, in very, like, Kiva Akamaro fashion, as the wings sprout, sprout out out of Solok's back, uh, he is flying towards Ember from one side as he has Tempest come from the other side. And instead of doing a fang over fang, they're going for more of a, like, uh, thunder over lightning. Perfect. Okay. Put a pin in that, because this does happen. Yeah. You see the electricity come out. You're closing in on both sides. Ember looks very much unconcerned by all of this is just yeah, like he, his two eyes are just kind of looking at the two of you while he's essentially over the light fantastic and you see your friends uh down on the deck of the ship suffering and Solok, you know or at least you've heard the just like the death knight's cataclysmic breath if you're the death dragons if you die you're resurrected as a zombie Embers isn't quite like that, but if Embers' breath kills you, your body is just obliterated. There's nothing left. There's nothing but ashes. And he is over them, and he's done it twice, and you don't know if he can do it a third time. And then everything stops. The ship stops. Ember stops. The wind and the rage and the flames overhead all Stop. Miria. All of you hear a voice come from nowhere in particular. Oh, Miria Rathrin. It seems you've gotten involved in quite a predicament here. And a golden-skinned, white-haired wizard in red robes appears on the deck of the Light Fantastic with his staff in hand. Mm. Might I offer you some assistance? Well, one can never have too many friends. (sighs) Mm. Because the good people of Idle Champions voted that an old friend would return to help. And as you say this to Raceland, he says, yes, not too many friends. And you all hear another voice, an unfamiliar voice say, that's right. Uh, My old friend Paladin told me that there were some good guys here in need of some. no. And right, (laughs) right next to you, you see smiling face of a kinder who's no. taller than most with a, st- with a slingshot on the end and he says hey hey guy you're not looking too good but you know what uh, it's been a good day for me because I found this big coin on the deck and I think this is just like my lucky day I was just gonna take it and clean it up and so uh, my name's Tesla Hop by the way Tesla Hop Burfoot, you can just call me Tass. It doesn't roll off the tongue too easily. Anyway, burned up cat guy, new coin. Yeah, just nowhere to go but up. You need a hand, man? Give me that immediately. Oh, well, okay. I mean, I just, I mean, I just, I just figured somebody lost it. I just, there you go. Yes. And the moment, the moment you touch it, oh my goodness, his bums, they were, this, his fingers were so sticky. I don't know what he's been touching. It's like jelly or something. Uh, of course, he's got sticky bums, sticky fingered little <laughs> lad. <laughs> <laughs> whoa! whoa, whoa one good whoa, piece whoa, of whoa, whiz. Just, hey, wait, 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 wait. Sometimes things just make their way into my pouches. Hey, hey, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm. Make their way into your pouches. So however, my rapier makes its way into your stomach. Hey, whoa, 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 wh
right, Paladin said that you needed help, and we are here to help. And Leanne, you see a towering man uh, wearing black armor etched with a red rose that you realize is what Salts must have looked like some time ago with a long black mustache and a heavy helmet. And he leans down to help you up also, and he says, My lady, Sturm Brightblade. I pledge myself to assist you. Oh, thank you. And like hand jumps right yeah. out. Yep. She pick, he picks you up. Sentry, you uh-huh. see. So you've now seen Raceland. You didn't see him before. Again, he is sickly and gaunt with yellow skin and eyes like hourglasses and long white hair. You see another man who looks like Raceland if he lifted. Uh, he is tan and robust and wide-chested, and he says, Oh, you have the bearings of a warrior. It's a, I saw what you did there with the flames, and you just took what? Just Caramon Majer. And well, he extends a hand. Ah, yes. Hmm. Seems like... Uh, You've got things under control here, but uh, might you give me a pointer or two? Show me how it's done in some dragon slang? Oh, of course. Yes, I'd be glad to. <sighs> and Merylwyn, there on the ground, as you sort of are covering over Simon, you know, ready to take these flames for him that just missed somehow, you see a man leans down, a bearded half-elf in green, And he says, well, you were smart enough to duck. You must be the brains of the operation. Oh, well, I I try. Uh, Uh I must say everyone here is is very intelligent. I've always been impressed by their knowledge. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, You know, we kind of have a a similar thing going here, sort of a decentralized leadership structure, but... um, just let us know what we can do. I'm, I'm Tannis. Tannis half-elven. Hopefully that's Hi. not a problem. The elves around here seem to not really look too kindly on my kind. And if you're... I don't know how they are in your huh? kingdom. I don't want to offend you by my muddy-blooded presence here. Oh, I, I hang out with more than elves where I uh, reside. So it's a pleasure oh, to meet you. Good. Yes. I also hang out with more than elves as you can see here he helps you to your feet and so long here you are coming in from the other side you see him in the other side coming out above you you see an outline of a blue dragon twice the size of Tim. And a woman in blue armor looks down from the saddle at you, and she says, By what power am I here? Oh, God, they were all very campy. Friendship. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. You know, Mark, this is my moment. You got to let me have this. Oh. You see, she turns and looks and she says, oh, my brothers, my companions, they're (sighs) heroes of the lance is what they called us. I told Tannis I could not be bothered to meet at the end of the last home. I have an army to lead. uh, You also bear the markings of our queen Tiamat, and yet you raise hands against Ember, her lieutenant. Why? Because he's weak and must be replaced. Uh, <laughs> you do know the queen. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm called the Blue Lady, but you may call me Kitiara Uthmatar. And my brothers are buffoons, but I cannot let them die here, and we will deal with the queen's fury afterwards. <sighs> and Ember is a fool. What say we supplant him for some superior options? I would be honored. So, here is how this is going to work. Because again, 
the good people of Idol Champions said an old friend would show up, but if I couldn't bring the freaking Heroes of the Lance, what can, if not now, when? So here's how this is going to work. They are going to help you all. The way that is going to work is whatever you do, the damage will be doubled as they are fighting alongside you. However, you have to tell me what it looks like when they are fighting mm -hmm. next to you. In extremely broad strokes, um, Stern, Brightblade, and Karamon are fighters. Tasselhoff is a rogue. Um, Tannis is a ranger. Uh, Raistlin is the wizard's wizard. And um, Kitiara is also like a dragon riding warrior. That is a gross oversimplification, I know. But this is how we're going to do it now. So, Solok, with Kitiara helping you, what would you like to do? That's fire. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so Luck is definitely going to try to do a double breath weapon with her dragon and then with Tempest for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so Tempest is going to breathe out his lightning once more. Mm -hmm. And that's a, another dexterity saving throw. You see her dragon sky looks down in everything starts moving again. You know, the, the flame, you see Ember looks around now seeing twice as many heroes as he saw before and looks up at Kitiara and says, Rat, traitor. The Dragon Queen was wrong to trust her armies to a two-legged ape like you. And Kitiara just says, Oh, I would be offended by that if you weren't going to be dead in seconds. And Sky looks down at you, Solok, and he says, mm. Your friend over there is small but fearsome. I acknowledge and admire your teamwork. Give it time. He will yeah. grow. He will. <sighs> In the meantime, let us in his lightning breath erupts as well. Now, uh, again, Ember is actually decently dexterous. What did he, what's he need to, because he got a 20, a dirty 20. Then he would have passed. So he would take half. But which because, would be, yeah. Because it would have been double, 33. just roll it. Yep. 33? 33, yep. You see Ember starts turning, trying to get out of the path of this lightning breath, uh, which actually brings him closer to the light fantastic where you all can reach him here. Uh, perfect. Anything else from uh, Solok? Solok would actually just try to get on Sky uh, mm -hmm. behind Kidiara and do like a flyby strike if they can bring him along so that he could focus on just swinging along Ember's wings and back. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Roll it. And Leanne, you're on deck, by the way. Leanne and Stern Brightblade. Mm. So that is a 26 to hit. That is enough. You want me to just double and just double the number? Yep. Okay. That is. Oh. Uh, so 68 point damage. 68. Okay. Perfect. And then second strike. A twenty-six again. Perfect. And ah, these numbers are ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. I rolled the same to hit and the same damage both times. Another sixty-eight. All right. Uh, oh, you see huge exactly. chunks are taken out of his back in his armor as you and Kitiara are both slashing violently at him. Uh, and you see just a smile come across her face. And you see both Karamon and Raislin and Tannis all look up at her and they're like, is, is that Kitiara? <sighs> we'll deal with that later. Uh, Leanne, your turn with Stern Brightblade helping you. Okay, so she's gonna turn all smiles to Sturm and be like, tell you what, I'll take high, you take low with that strong sword of yours. And she's going to pull out her bow and start shooting at Ember. She Have at shots. it. So, all right, let me just see how these all hit. Uh, lowest is an 18, will they all hit? No, actually. Ooh, okay. What will hit then? 22 plus. <laughs> and then one hits. He's so wearing armor. So she'll shoot one. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
And that is going to be a total of 15 piercing. Perfect. As you all are hacking away, some of the arrows bouncing off the armor, some of Sturm's strikes, but you still manage to catch him a couple of times as he is hovering over you all. Uh, anything else from Leanne? Then Sturm would be an additional 15 then? Yeah. Cool. And Perfect. that's going to be it for her. All righty. Um, Sentry, same thing. Tell me what Karaman does to help you here. Cool. Um, I think Sentry with bonus action activate Starbreaker mm -hmm. and go onto the top of the Light Fantastic and plunge Starbreaker into the belly of Ember from above. But I imagine like Karamon's like his because he's very strong. I imagine his arms mm -hmm. almost sort of guide her strike and like lift her arms up with him. So you're both Perfect. striking up with Yeah, so both striking together. Perfect. Yeah, he he looks at the lance and he's just like a lance to slay dragons. I've heard tell of such thing. Actually, what you know? Never mind. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead and roll it, Sentry. Alrighty. Uh, twenty-five to hit. That is enough. Amazing. Level five divine smite. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me just do a right. Get the calculators out. <laughs> mm hmm. We've not now win. Thirty-six, and then that's doubled. Seventy-two. Yep. Perfect. And perfect, then I will perfect. strike again. Mm-hmm. That was a natural one, so I miss on that one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Karaman, Karaman is sort of like slipping. He's like, oh, it's difficult to find a grip. <laughs> <laughs> Karaman! <laughs> uh, as, uh, Ember is going to wing buff it. Uh, so everybody but Solok deck saves here as he's dodging you all. And you see the whole ship kind of like drops slightly. Uh, it's kind of nauseating uh, as it goes down. Ordinarily, uh, I love a wing buffet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, just to make it simple, it's a DC 26 or take 17 bludgeoning and be knocked prone uh, oh. by the wing buffet. I'm not uh, down. 29. I'm it's down. Are you down down? I'm not down down. Okay. I'm Wait, is, what, is, is anybody unconscious? Not yet. I'm no, close just prone. Oh, just, just prone. Right. Got it. I'm like, I got to clarify there when you say I'm down. I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, perfect. Um, you see the crew, uh, the crew of the Spelljammer mans the Balliste because that was the last thing you all had voted for, uh, that they would be fighting here. Unfortunately, they are somewhat ineffective with these archaic weapons and they're like, bachook, bachook, and just sort of like bounce off of, uh, <laughs> bounce off of Ember's hide here. Perfect. Uh, okay. Uh, Merylwyn with Tannis helping. Okay. So, um, I would oh, hang, hang on. Sorry, wait. I, I was reading the wrong thing there. Actually, that is uh, Miria. Sorry, Miria. Uh, with Raceland helping. Sorry, I, I have I, multiple I can, places where I have your names written. <laughs> I can go off to Meryl one. If Meryl wants to go first, I don't mind. I can go after at the end. Okay. Um, Do you not mind? Go go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so mm. I know you said that ra these these uh, Raceland is, is potentially to double damage, but could Raceland instead? provide disadvantage to a saving throw rather than doubling the damage because the spell i want to use is a save or suck it's a nothing or everything oh absolutely friend nice so i think that miria is like raceland tie him down bind him i need him still uh <sighs> and yeah he will use some sort of cool spell in his yep. cool you 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 i to be dave i would not take away the honor for you <sighs> being raceland so you you tell me what he would do you see Raceland just begins to swirl his fingers. And again, flames and wind are still all over you here. But you see the sky itself begins to like wrap around Ember uh, and begin holding him still and pulling him towards the deck of the ship. And yes, please. Eighth level, disintegrate, deck save, DC 21. Uh, uh, he got a two, so he is not going to make that save. 16 d6 plus 40 damage. Perfect. 103 points of force damage. <laughs> yes! You, 
see Amazing. you blast a hole clean through Ember, and he actually turns back into his human form there on the deck of the ship, clutching his waist, but still stands up like blood coming out of his teeth, saying some truly vile things in Draconic. Your time as the champion is over. You were not strong enough for the queen. You don't know strength. You don't know glory. <coughs> Rust, your turn. Pop him, Rust. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go <laughs> pop him. Yeah. Um, how it works. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I'd like to. Yeah, I'd like. To, uh, can I bonus action hide and then like boop? Of course Out you can. That? Yeah. Um, so... And he's very flanked. <laughs> oh he's well, if he's flanked, flanked against, yeah. Right, great. Then I'll then mm -hmm. I'll just I'll just straight up try and shank him. And you got to tell me what uh, Tesselhoff does to hurt you, what to help you here. Yes. Sorry. Excuse me. Uh, yep. Let's see. Mm. As you very much look down, and his hand is headed towards the pouch nine lives is in, and he's like. But, yeah, I, I was. I just want to keep it safe. I didn't. I thought that you know, gold and jackets and they, like gold, and I just. Ugh! I I want to pull a dagger, put it in his hands, and say, "Hold this and come with me." Um, I'd like to oh, tuck okay. him under my arm. I will and, say, and, you and notice Brian. everybody else is alternatively feeling the fear and just understanding the stakes of what's happening here. Tasselhoff yeah. seems utterly unconcerned. Like, this is just a great day. Like, he just has a big smile on his face. He's like, ooh, all right. <laughs> yep. Here we go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I kind of, like, like I'm carrying a carpet under my arm. I'm just going <laughs> to run in and then just try and, like, throw, throw the kender. Just yeah. uh, throw like, throwing uh, weapon. <laughs> he's like, you know, I tried this with Flint, but he's too short. Okay, okay, let's go. Yeah, all right, let's go. Uh, Okie dokie. So, uh, hang on. The rapier to hit. I got a twenty-six. That is enough. Um, great. Um, which would make that. Uh, let's see. Nine points of damage plus sneak attack. Damn the nine. Uh, <laughs> twenty-five. Uh, so double this fifty if the damage okay. is being doubled. Perfect. Uh, 50 points of piercing damage. You stab into him in. No actual human could withstand this, but obviously as a dragon, he is built from, built from sterner stuff here. Uh, mm -hmm. as he is grievously injured, but still on his feet. Uh, anything else uh, from Rust? Uh, now I'd like to bonus action hide. <laughs> <laughs> uh, perfect. Uh, hang on a second here. Merylwyn. You see, he looks at you all, and he's like, <coughs> <sighs> as you see, he begins to glow with flames that you can see inside of his rib cage. As I have rolled, and he did recharge his breath weapon again. Uh, and if his breath weapon drops anyone to zero, they will die outright. But before he gets a chance to breathe, Meryl, when it is your turn, if you can stop him right now, otherwise okay. he is going to do what he does. Okay. Century. Right. Okay. I'm not going to be able to heal anyone enough, just in case. So what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to cast uh, Ice Storm on him while he's on the deck. Um, and <sighs> I'm going to basically ask my friend Tannis to try and like get an arrow to kind of like pin any cloak or any any part of any clothes that he has so that he can uh, hopefully have a disadvantage on a saving you throw see a, Tannis yeah. is almost a blur of just arrows coming out going in yeah. like towards his feet towards his legs towards his cloak you see Ember and says Ah, the Dragon Queen has smiled upon me. <laughs> she wanted me to prove my dedication and strength. I deliver your souls to her. <laughs> and what is the save he needs to make? So he needs to make a 19. But he... that just means he gets half damage. 
he is going to use a legendary resistance to make sure that he passes. Uh, how much damage is that, though? He's okay. real beat up. He's real beat up. All right, so all right. The biggest you can get. I'm, I'm on ninth. He is going to unleash his breath weapon next if he, if it comes back around to his turn. Like, I just, I don't, I can't heal enough people. Like, I'm... I can do a heal. If you're worried about the healing, Leanne can do the healing next go-round. Okay, so... As bold of you to assume you're going to live to the next go-round, but yes, please. I'm thinking optimistically there, Mr. DM. <laughs> I'm thinking realistically. But Dave, yes. Well, I'm going to send you a message, Dave. Halved, okay, halved would have been 23, but with my friend helping me out, it's still 46 points of damage. Uh, perfect. Where where are, are you sending this, uh, Solok? Let me make sure I yep. see. Where? Uh, Twitter. All right, hang on. Let me, let me just make sure Solok's not about to do some like foolhardishly heroic. In case. Perfect. 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 perfect, perfect. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh, so, uh -huh. Meryl, when you you did forty six, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. I, I I know this would be going back in time, but I forgot because again we got so much going on. I could have added my life channel from my add up to the black robes to the disintegrate damage, and I absolutely would have done that. But if we can't do that, I totally accept it, and I will. That's fine. But I I could have added more damage to my spell. I just forgot because there's a million things and I'm stressed. But uh, I don't mind uh, if we don't add it now. That's fine. I understand. A lot is happening, Marilyn. As Tannis is shooting these arrows, and the swirl of ice is starting to form here, and you see that he is breathing in and about to do this. Just real quick check in. Uh, if you fail to save on this breath weapon, he is going to do 78 points of damage, which will kill you outright. Just everybody who's currently under 78 hit points, just, just raise your hand. Just cool, 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 cool. Great, 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 great. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. However, he only had 16 hit points left. Yes! Oh! Yes! <laughs> yes! Jeez. ZB day. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, God. yeah, yeah. Merylwyn, <laughs> tell me what it looks like after you stop him. Like, I'm just like, not today. Not today, <laughs> sir. And, like, just brings up, like, just this ice comes out. She's, she's looking like Elsa from Frozen right now. And just and then just similar to like moonbeam but with these icy white um shards of like crystals that have like almost formed into spears they drop around him and, <laughs> and they just go through him every <laughs> and as he is being driven backwards here and you see one of them finally just impales him and hooks him to the deck and you see the flames leaking out and burning the deck around him. And he just like looks down and looks up at all of you and says, You weaklings, I'll be back. And turns back into his full dragon form as the ship begins to pitch and lets his lifeless body just slide off and go hurtling down, crashing into the ground below. Nice to meet you. <laughs> to do another quote. <laughs> and you see Tasselhoff looks at you and he goes, ah, nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, hey, all right. High five, high five, yeah. Hey, uh, you know, hey, check this out. I just found this really cute cat. He's got a little snakeskin collar. Like, that's, uh, I didn't know. That I grabbed him. Free cat. I oh, grabbed him oh. by the throat. Put the cat down now. Grab seven by the throat? That's horrible. No, not seven. Not giving away free cats. Not giving away free cats. Okay. <laughs> you see, as um, he falls overhead you see the heroes imme immediately turn and look over to kalamon where all of these dragons are attacking and tanis looks at you all and he's like i think um i know what we have to do next but it's been an honor um race can you uh get us uh and you see Raceland is just sort of scratching at his temple and he looks at you miria and he says hmm 
the stories of the power of the Knights of the Black Robe are apparently true. <laughs> Perhaps I need to reevaluate some things. Perhaps you should, student. And Miria will pull from, I want to pull out from the bag of holding. Uh, and I'd like to give Raceland Miria's spare spell book um, and be like, to assist you with your endeavors. He looks at it and he says, I've come this far in the pursuit of knowledge. Why not a little farther? And he motions and you see a gate opens and you can see a street with people screaming and running and draconians and things. And the heroes of the Lance all look at you and they're like, well, good luck. And they all just plunge through. And you see Raceland just sort of very slowly backs into it. And Solok, you see Kitiara on Sky looks at the portal and looks over there and she doesn't go. And she looks at you and says, this is all going to become a lot more complicated. Yes, but that is now my responsibility. Ember's seat is open. <laughs> the Dragon Queen is not forgiving, but she understands a good deal when she sees it. And she extends and she says, from one fellow blue dragon enthusiast to the other, it's been an honor. Truly a pleasure. And she shakes your hand and <sighs> flies off. Mm -hmm. And with that, the light fantastic continues to climb, beaten and bruised and everything. But on its way out, as the captain comes up and she's like, hey, all right. See, I told you. I mean, again, that was only like half the problem. I mean, the dragon is fearsome, but the dragon can get hit, suffocation. We wouldn't even know. I've been told it's like just going to sleep, probably. Um, but we got to go. So who's coming and who's staying? Just before as well, I just a little moment in my head. I had in my head that after <laughs> Merowyn decimates uh, Ember with the ice, I think like in a very unlike categoristic way, Miria would have just been like extremely excited at like this horrible magical devastation that she caused <laughs> and just like give her like a big hug in a very sort of like, ah, like you did it amazing. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so proud of you. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Like super right. excited yeah. way. Um, and yeah. so he's probably still like hugging Merowyn and stuff as the captain comes up. Um, so canonically, Mary is a woo girl. That's all I'm saying. You just said it. You just said yeah, it on the internet. There's, there's, some, there's some woo girl in her. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, just when she chooses it. Uh, yeah. Um, and you all do see, as Carstairs says this, there is a small eruption of flame. And on the deck of the ship, you all see Takis is standing there, staff in hand. And she says, I believe we had a deal, Miria, and holds her hand out to you. Miria will walk towards her and unhook the, the cage and will hold it up and place it into Kisis's hands. As agreed, <sighs> your majesty. <sighs> Solok, and she just taps the staff. Yes, my lady. You know what comes next, correct? I do indeed. Say your goodbyes, my champion. Oh, and mortals. My kindness as well as my patience, unlike my power, has limits. I said I would let you go. That offer is closing. When next we meet, all bets are off. And <laughs> disappears in a puff of flames. And Carstairs is like, so she was equal parts hot but terrifying. That's what I'm saying. That, that, <laughs> the best ones always are. Not, not um, wrong. So, again, staying, going, atmosphere is getting thinner by the second. So, uh. I'm going. I've got some fur to regrow back home. I would also like to go. I'd like to go too. And me. Leanne? I don't want to stay here anymore. And that simply leaves Solok. I'll find you again. But I need to make sure that she keeps to her word before I go anywhere. 
Solak, it has been a pleasure. You're a good sort. There's no one I trust more to keep Takesis in check, that's for sure. You have earned my respect. And you will forever have it. Be kind to each other. I, so you are... Simon? <laughs> Even Simon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you have I... done more in a few days than the knights have done in years. I would like to try and go up to Tempest and give him a little pat on the head, like as a little thank you he probably, as well. He probably likes it more than he gives in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, friend. I think Sentry so would long. go up to... Sorry. Oh, just one quick thing, Sentry, because I definitely want to hear what you have to say. Uh, from down in the hole, Sentry, you see a blue head pop up as Spark is in the hole with the other dragon elves and is like, I mean, I can I can come with you or I could sort of go and tell your story in a place that's not this. But you know, we, we had a connection. So if you want me, I am there. Or you could command me to go. If you would like to go, Spark, it just means they will be easier to find you. I will always know where you are. Yeah, that, that. I will be a beacon for you to find them. Mm -hmm. I'm helping. And pulls his head down <laughs> under the deck. Sorry. Yes, Sentry. I think Sentry just walk up to Solak with just an open hand. Just, just say, I hope to fight by your side again one day. Wherever, whenever that day may come, I'll always look forward to it. If you call Sentry, you have my word I will be there. Same to you. And as Solok departs and we are beginning to see the stars in the atmosphere as the ship begins to climb, there is only one last piece of business, Sentry. What's going to happen to this guardian? <laughs> and what's going to happen to Sentry? I, I imagine that Sent, I guess Sentry would go into power down mode and the Matrix would find her. She'd connect to the Matrix to Root and Root would pull Sentry's soul back to Aroes, but also the Guardian's soul would come with her. So they would both in tandem go back to Aroes together. And what, if anything, does Root say to his returning hero? As the faint voice grows louder and louder, as you begin to feel that kind of passage of time. And for Sentry, this would be an akin to the feeling that you've had before when you've plumbed the depths of the Matrix to pull on knowledge and experience and speak with Root and other Guardians. It feels as though you are swimming in a golden river. But holding your hand alongside you, you can sense a young guardian spirit. And it's not quite complete. They don't remember their life on Eroes. They don't remember their life even before then. They don't remember what it was like to be a guardian in our realm. But they are safe and they are willing to learn and find a new place and a new home. And, well... There's only one thing Root can possibly say. Till all are one. And with that, as the light Fantastic Two goes hurtling off into the wild space for parts unknown and probably not you all suffocating in space, most likely, probably. That is a good place for us to stop. So... <laughs> Thank you all so much for tuning in, not just today, but over all six episodes of uh, Idol Champions Presents. Thank you so very much to our heroes for joining us here. Uh, I got to do my last little bit of housekeeping, and then we're, we're going to give you all a chance to say a proper goodbye. Uh, the giveaway winners, uh, Squigglefar, 
wins uh, Balagos, the ancient red dragon from WizKids D&D Icons of the Realms. A confused fool wins the Ultimate Dragonlance collection. And man, same. Uh, remember, <laughs> use code DRAGONSLAY at dndmini.com for 10% off your next order. Thank you, WizKids. That expires March 31st. Again, for the winners there, Squiggle Far and Confused Fool, keep an eye on your whispers. That is how we will contact you. For the episode six, Beedle and Grimm Dice Giveaway, the Bard set, uh, which is super dope. Uh, you know what? Now that I have a second, I can, I can. Eh, well, I say I can show it to you, but they're in here very securely. There you go. I don't know. Can you see that? Can you see the kind of the, oh, the colors oh, there, the Bard set? Really cool. Uh, yeah. There's a bunch of extra dice for Bardic Inspirations. Uh, goes to Demon Gurr. G-R-R-R. -R -R, Demon Gurr. Thank you. Thank you to V and Jake for producing and V pulling double, uh, double duty, bringing Leanne double to duty. life here for us. Thank you to Jay and Jordan for moderating. Thank you to Ellen, Gabe, Johnny, Mark, and Rhiannon for bringing their characters to Idol Champions Presents. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Stop. The pleasure was all mine. Uh, <laughs> season three has started. Purchase your pass in the in game shop. Starting next week, tune in for the first episode of a familiar quest, Season three. Eugenio Vargas is our DM with players Alicia Marie as Misty, Megan Kenrick as Squiddle. I have gone to great lengths to try and kill Squiddle in multiple <laughs> campaigns. I'm like, if I get a crossover, I'm going to swing at Squiddle again. Uh, Brian Gray is Disco. It's a Squiddling. It shouldn't exist. Uh, and Kelly Butler is Scotty. Things get started at 5 p.m. Pacific on Monday, April 3rd. Catch the rebroadcast of this very finale today at 4 p.m. However, I know we're slightly over, but since this is the end and you all look so very beautiful, I just want to make sure I give you a chance to say who you are and where people can find you. I'm gonna go in the in the kind of reverse order on the horn as you are here on my screen, starting with V. Oh, uh, hi everyone. I'm the partner and talent manager here for Codename Entertainment. Today I played Leanne, but you can see me playing other characters as well as, you know, your lovely Dark Lord champion, Voronika, who is going to be making an appearance on Wednesday for a Weva charity event with B Dave as our DM extraordinaire. Mm. So join us for that at what time are we starting on that one? 1 2 PM? Pacific. 2 PM 2 Pacific. Pacific. 2 Pacific. So join us on Weva's Twitch channel for that one and catch me on Friday for your next paint and slay. You know, you are in fact the head wrangler of cats around here. Also, I would be remiss if I didn't <laughs> say that April 1st is the end the I guess two year anniversary of when the Black Dice Society started in Voronika's first episode. So catch the mm -hmm. the VOD of Black Dice Society episode one. Our girl had quite an arc. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh Rhiannon. Hello, I'm Rhiannon. Uh, you can find me on High Rollers with the lovely Mark. We play our, our campaign of Rois every Sunday on twitch.tv slash High Rollers D&D. And we are wrapping up our five year long campaign nearly now. It's getting into the epic, epic final arc. So you are fighting getting... Space Daddy right now. Space yep. Daddy is here. Love that man. <laughs> <laughs> That's mostly where I live. <laughs> Perfect. Johnny. Hello, uh, I can be found on youtube.com forward slash Johnny Chiodini, uh, as written on screen. It's my name, it's not that imaginative. Uh, but also uh, the Oxventure, so youtube.com forward slash Oxventure. Uh, it's, oh, it's it's a campaign, all right. <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah, 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 it is. Yeah. You know, I leave it up to you whether or not, uh, you know, canonically uh the the her, her cat her cat simon has made a return or not i'm just saying you take it the way and i give it and then now you have a chance to take it the way yet again <laughs> <laughs> this is the future for us it's fine we, we're lower level, leave, so we're fine. Have, yeah we'll have a, we'll have a chat about this <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the always lovely but now particularly lovely mark Oh, thank you very much. Uh, people can find me online. My personal Twitter is Sherlock underscore Humes. I think it's just Sherlock Humes on Instagram and it's Sherlock Humes underscore at the end on Twitch. Uh, but like Rhiannon said, you mainly can find me every Sunday for High Rollers d, &D High Rollers d, &D on Twitch YouTube podcast. Uh, we are wrapping up our second big epic campaign, hopefully with a brand new campaign starting this year. So if you don't want to watch five years of d, d you can jump in with our new campaign as well. Um, and yeah, you can follow me on, on, on Twitter and stuff. And a big thank you to uh, basically everyone. It's just been amazing. It's been lovely. Uh, it has. It has. I, I was saying all the nice things at the beginning because I was like, you guys might be mad at me by the end. I didn't know how this was going to go. So uh, I don't um, want to cry, so I'm not going to say anymore. So <laughs> it's a, don't want your, your mess to get right around. I get it. Uh, mm -hmm. Ellen. 
Uh, hi, yeah, you can find me uh, along with Johnny at Oxventure.com. Uh, well, Oxventure, sorry, YouTube.com forward slash Oxventure. Uh, and then uh, also I am over at Outside Extra where I talk about video games. Uh, you can find me at Ickle Nelly Rose on lots of different things. Um, also, uh, you know, YouTube channel, Ickle Nelly Rose. Where I just talk, I've been doing that for years now. And uh, yeah, I just want to yeah, mirror what Mark said. It's been an absolute pleasure playing with all of you um it was just a lot of fun and there's been a lot of people here that i've been wanting to like play with for a long time and it's really lovely to finally do it so yay yeah uh and last but not least a person who defeated time space and acts of gods to be with us gabe Lord <laughs> love. uh yeah gabe pace gabe james games one day i'll play in a b dave game where he will not so easily sway me to do something good for the baddie because it really just now happened like three different times <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's very much yeah, yeah. i feel that the, <laughs> the point where like he let me be vecna but that's a whole different point um that is true i uh you can find me at gabe james games twitter tiktok instagram don't go to my tiktok it's a weird place um or do. I, okay. I want to immediately go it's a very oh, sexy no. place it's a very no, sexy no, place. No. Why, why my yeah, presence yeah, yeah. is all over the internet because i have no sense of focus uh but i do have a big campaign starting up in like may uh that's a very last of us inspired post-apocalyptic campaign because mm. i wanted to play in a system where people couldn't revive so easily so i can scare them a little bit more because mm -hmm. these monsters are like oh yeah now we found a diamond mine well damn it yep <laughs> yep well indeed uh and then there is just me i'm b dave walters or uh you can find me wherever fine streaming content can be located again got a charity game coming up on wednesday uh with b and some other beautiful human beings playing truly terrible dark lords of the mist um got a few programs 14 day dm 14 day player 14 day writer if you want to learn how to do what we do it's on my twitter i'm b dave walters everywhere thank you all for tuning in thank you once again to all of you for playing uh maybe maybe we're already planning the next one and who knows what's going to happen but i'm just saying i let all of you live this time so that means i don't have to hold back in the next one so thank you <laughs> and we will see you all next time thank you Bye. Bye. Bye.